it's a you know a chance that Oak Ridge could could possibly win this game in a, in a shootout. But uh, Riverdale is going to put up some points. They have every game, and they've put up points against you know the top three teams in the state so i wouldn't think oak ridge would be any different one of the things we're going to have to deal with for the third consecutive week scott is a i don't know is obnoxious the right word uh pa announcer uh, i mean uh, we've we've dealt with him before really even back in the days when they were at middle tennessee state but uh three weeks in a row we've had some interesting public address announcers well well this guy is uh, he's 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 done it he's been here for a long time but he only does it when they're on offense is the best i remember you know the guy at cookville was to me was was out of line because he was doing it when you know our players were coming up to the ball to the line of scrimmage and calling out their cadence um i didn't i didn't have any problem with the guy last week i actually kind of thought he that, was he was pretty good he was pretty good you know and I'm, I'm sure that if he was our pa guy we would you know we would like him but uh, this guy is uh, he you know especially when they're chewing up a whole bunch of first downs a whole bunch for it gets on your nerves in a hurry you know, as I look across the field, the crowd is still filing in. Uh, there was, it was pretty good. I got here in really good time. There was really hardly any traffic issues as the Warriors are getting set here. I think they'll be receiving the kick. Brett Beeler will be kicking off for the Oak Ridge Wildcats. Yeah, I didn't see if, uh, I didn't see who won the uh, toss. We may have won it and deferred to the second half, but uh, the Oak Ridge defense will be on the field. And again, we'll see early how good this Riverdale Warrior offense is. And we apologize. As I said, we've been having some issues with the cell phone here, and hopefully that won't be a, a continuing problem throughout the night here. Hopefully we'll be able to get through here. And it looks like we're already having some issues here as we get set for football action here on prepradio.com, Oak Ridge Schools Television Channel 15 and 92.7. The Wildcats getting ready to kick off. Brett Beeler will be kicking from left to right, and we're about set here from from Riverdale High School. Here's the kick. It's a line drive kick. It's going to be fielded by the the Riverdale Warriors at the 5, up to the 10, to the 15. On Then the tackle is made by Golston and Cam Gregg around the 9-yard line, and that'll be where Riverdale will take over first down and 10 yards to go. It's unbelievable up here that we don't have a complete roster, which I don't know if you've uh, seen their roster here. Uh, there was, it was, it was yes, handwritten, I believe, as the... Uh, as that they didn't even their their radio people down down there didn't have a, a roster they have and they and we had to borrow the one roster they had the PA roster he had an old crumpled one for Ben to type in his uh, his statistic thing as the Riverdale Warriors have it first and ten wing T formation they hand it off and the stack of tackle is made by Oak Ridge I believe finally they're going to get him down at around the 15 yard line he never actually went down as he's tackled at the 15 yard line it's a gain on the play of about uh, four or five yards for the uh, for the Warriors. The tackle is made by Ryan Hall. The secondary for Oak Ridge, the corners are Ryan Hall and Tyrus Henderson. The safeties are Greg, Cam Greg, along with Chris Golston. The linebackers are Elliot Norman, Alex Ingham, and Jeffrey Card. The linemen, the ends are Jeff Mason, along with Zach Hughes, uh, Jared O'Farrell, and Jarnigan are the tackles. Here comes the running back trying to get outside and does, moves the ball forward before he's wrestled out of bounds up the field at around the 30-yard line. Marcellus Odom is the ball carrier for the Riverdale Warriors. And nothing fancy, it's just the old wing tee, and they pick up a first down. There's your first down for your Riverdale Warriors. And again, just hard running by Odom. T took the ball, just went over the right end and uh, picked up uh, plenty enough for the first down. Officially, the ball is down at the 29-yard line. Mike, did they tell us that things are sounding better back at the station? Good. So the ball's at the 29-yard line. Murfreesboro, their opening drive, first and 10. Handoff goes to the back, and he's blasted at the line of scrimmage. Hit right down. Actually might have even lost a yard. Zach Hughes was around the ball carrier, and that is where the stop is made by Oak Ridge. Oak Ridge wearing their cardinal pants along with their white jerseys and cardinal numerals, while the Riverdale Warriors... Is that like Florida State colors, I guess? Is what, what's the is that maroon and um, is it garnet and gold? Yeah. I believe. I mean, they, their uniforms look just like Florida State, wearing red on red. Second down, ten yards to go for Riverdale. Quarterback rolls to pass, dumps it in the flat, passes caught, and up the field. The stop is made by Oak Ridge's Cameron Gregg after a gain of about three. It'll bring up third down and about five yards to go for the Riverdale Warriors. They have some size, but they're not nearly as big as the Bradley team we saw a week. Ago. Yeah, I don't think so. Matter of fact, the center of down here, he doesn't he doesn't look very big at all. Very 
very small guy, but, uh, you know, one of the things that this wing tee does, they'll hand off to one guy and then come back and fake it to two or three guys, or they'll fake it and then hand off. It's very, very hard to find the football. Quarterback is Dylan Woodruff. He is a sophomore. They've got a double wing, single running back. Woodruff wants to pass in trouble. Boom! He's sacked, but he gets the pass away. Pass is delivered, and they'll not get pick up a first down. Elliot Norman came almost untouched and just wailed on the quarterback. It'll be fourth down at about four, and the ball's at the 35-yard line, and the punt team will come onto the field. So already one of the goals that Coach Blade said has been established. They'll be forced to punt. Well, that's a great job of the defense. They gave up one first down, and then here they, you know, Riverdale actually came out and tried to throw, and that pass was actually, from where I looked, it was behind him. I think that was a lateral. I don't know if he had a, another pass to go off of that or not, but great job of starting off this ball game by the defense of Oak Ridge. Ten men on the line. Here comes the snap. The punt is nearly blocked by Cameron Gregg. It's going to be fielded by Brady Hull, and he returns it to the 25, to the outside, to the 32-yard line, and that is where Oak Ridge will take over. First down, 10 yards to go. Cam Gregg got in there quick and almost blocked the punt. It looks like he may have even overshot it, David. He was in there uh, well enough, but easy enough to, to get in there and get a piece of that, but I think he went in so deep that the ball actually came in and went underneath of his outstretched arms. The Oak Ridge offense will come onto the field for the first time tonight. We're just underway here, and I haven't even looked for the clock here, and it is 9-10 to play, and I, I did it to myself this time. 9-10 to play in the first quarter. Bradley Zelliger from the shotgun, two receivers to his right, rolls to pass, dumps it in the flat, passes caught by the Wildcats. Brady Hull moves the ball up to the 39-yard line, and that is a gain of about six on the play. It'll bring up for the Wildcats. Second down, and about three yards to go. A lot of protection that time. Bradley just rolled to his right, nothing fancy. And the Wildcats pick up seven on the first play. Good good little play to start off. Nothing fancy, just a straight roll out, hit the guy in the flats, pick up seven, and you know we'll see that again. Here they come to the line. Rashad Gray and Ryan Hall split to the right. Brady Hull and one other receiver to the left side. Shotgun once again. The backfield consists of Rocky Flood. He is the tailback. And he'll, Bradley will run the ball himself. He's across for a first down as he brings the ball to the 44-yard line or close to it. And I think it's right enough for the first down. Yeah, it is enough for the first down. A great ball fake that time. Matter of fact, the defensive end over there on the right side did not see the ball. And Bradley pulled it. Defensive end over there thought the running back coming up to the middle had the ball. And Bradley had clear selling for the first down. Looks like the winner's going to take on the Maribel Rebels. They're all over Bearden tonight, 31-7 to in their ballgame. First down, 10 yards to go for the Wildcats. Bradley rolls to pass, fires in the flat once again to Brady Hull. Pass is caught at the 50-yard line. It's a gain of about six yards on the play. So far, the Wildcats able to move the ball in their first uh, couple plays here. The ball is officially across the midfield stripe in Riverdale territory at the 49-yard line. The Wildcats moving left to right as we broadcast here from the press box. We're sitting at about the 45-yard line, I guess. And the press box is kind of almost like a, a, a trailer, a mobile home that's put up on stilts. It's just like this whole stadium is built just like Carnes. So if you've been to Carnes, you've been to Riverdale. Wildcats have it second down. the athletes. Second down at about three and a half yards to go. Zelliger will hand it off to the Wildcat running back, Elliot Norman, and he moves the ball close to a first down. Pushed back hard by the Warriors. Pushed back at, at the 40, around the 47-yard line. Didn't get a great spot. It'll be third down and about uh, a yard or so to go. Haven't seen Rocky run the ball yet. Here comes Rocky into the ball game. Brings the play in from the sideline. He is the Wildcats senior running back who is Picked up uh, a lot of yards this year, nearly 1,400 on the season as the Wildcats come up. Third down, it's actually about two yards to go. Straight eye formation. Elliott Norman is the fullback. The tailback is Rocky Flood, and the handoff goes to Rocky, and Rocky has a first down he, as he brings the ball to the 45-yard line. Nothing fancy at all. The Wildcats just... Just pounding it out, John, it kind is, of like and, we saw last week. And he, we didn't get a real favorable spot, David. It's going to be really, really close. I think we kind of got uh, kind of got screwed out of about six inches, and they're actually going to bring the chains on. But uh, it looks like uh, from here, David, it is. Uh, it may be just a. Uh, it may just be just a few inches short. Ball, yeah, I, he got a terrible spot. Actually, horrible, horrible, yeah. The ball is resting at the 46-yard line. The chains are brought on the field. I think he is going to be short by the looks of it here. Crowd is kind of subdued, or is it just our booth right now? I, I, well, I think it's maybe a, a little bit of combination of both. It is going to be, let's see, a first and 10 wow. for the Oak Ridge Wildcats. Just barely, just the nose of the ball. They actually, they had, when they first put it up, 
the the marker the 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 big long tall thing was at about a you know 80, 75 degree angle I had to move it up to 90 degrees for, in order for the ball to to get across that and Oak Ridge maybe gets the first down by about a half an inch west on top of Anderson County 42 to 13 I believe right now we're down to wow. 642 here 0-0 zero, zero our score Wildcats first and 10 at the Riverdale 45 yard line moving left to right eye formation two receivers to the left Zulliger back to pass looks fires in the flat oh, passes no. is almost intercepted I tell you, if he just gets it just a little bit higher, that's going to go for big yardage. But Oak Ridge is very fortunate that just wasn't picked off and maybe even taken back the other way for a score. Yeah, again, he had to drop it over. I think that may have been a linebacker over there and almost did it, but he goes up and, and knocks the ball down. But fortunate for Oak Ridge that he doesn't, uh, he doesn't get that for an interception. Very second, dangerous pass. Second down, 10 yards to go. The ball is at the 40 almost the 45-yard line of the Warriors as the Wildcats split off Vez Smith along with Brady Hull to the far left. Oak Ridge comes up, shotgun, backfield split, one receiver to the right. The center is Jose Valadon, and here comes Bradley running the ball not far. He's blasted and sacked back at the 47-yard uh, line, and that is where the Warriors and... Um, the Warriors stop the Wildcats, and we apologize. We do hear that hum on our signal. It's just kind of a buzzing. I think it's the wiring of the building, actually, unfortunately. So hopefully we'll be able to uh, get past that as the Wildcats now have it third down at 11. Splitting out to the far right this time is Vez Smith along with Brady Hill. We have no score. We're in the first quarter. Both teams have picked up a couple first downs as the Warriors... Bradley wants to pass across the middle to Vez Smith. Pa oh, it's oh, pass interference. interference. And he throws yes. the flag. Yes. Vez Smith got blasted. Yes. And I guess the Warrior fans have never seen a call they liked well, because he just got blasted you, you right know, there. I, I, these guys are all up you know, yelling at the referee. That's pass interference every day of the week, any play, any stadium, anywhere. You know, when you're going up and you get hammered, you know, as you're going up, it's pass interference, plain and simple. And they come over and say pass interference against the defense. And this are the River, Riverdale fans here. They don't like it. And the Wildcats, are, as they walk the ball, it should be an Oak Ridge first down, obviously. And the Wildcats moving the ball up the field and kind of chewing some time off the clock. We're down to 544 to play in the first quarter of this uh, quarterfinals ball game here at Riverdale. Murfreesboro, Riverdale High School, only the second time we've ever played here. The last time was in 04. The last time the two teams played was in 2005 when Oak Ridge uh, knocked off Riverdale 17 to nothing at Blankenship Field and route to the uh, – on their way to the state championship game, which unfortunately for Wildcat fans, you might remember they lost to Ravenwood. First and 10 Oak Ridge at the Riverdale 31-yard line. Two receivers split to the left, Bradley Zulliger. So far, very little pressure on Zulliger as the Wildcats pick up a, a big penalty against them and allows them a first down, first and 10. And here's the pitch to Rocky Flood. Rocky trying to look for some room, has some, moves the ball forward for a gain of about five wow. or six yards. Nice run. Just a little toss, and not, not even necessarily a toss sweep, just a quick pitch. And uh, looked like there for a second, Rocky didn't really have anywhere to go and finally sees a, a little gap inside toward the tackle slot. And, it, was, uh, it was Jose Valadon, I think. Oh, just kind of maybe waiting for him to push his guy out of the way and ends up picking about six, six and a half yards on the play. And once again, the Wildcats have the ball at the Riverdale 25-yard line. The Riverdale crowd is extremely quiet right now. Second down at about four. I formation, two receivers to the right, one to the left. Zelliger is the quarterback for the Wildcats. I formation. Zelliger will hand it. No, he's going to pass. Looks, fires a bullet pass. It's caught. Ryan Hall inside the 10-yard line all the way down to the Riverdale 5 where it'll be first and goal, Oak Ridge. Boy, what a nice play that was. You just fake up the, the fake the ball up the middle and bring those linebackers in. And then you got the Ryan Hall running the post pattern, and Bradley Zelliger did a nice job of throwing it, threw it on time, threw a nice strike, nice pattern over there a nice catch by ryan hall ball is at the five yard line the wildcats knocking on the door against the warriors here they come up to the line the tailback is rocky flood the fullback for the wildcats is elliot norman rocky gets the call rocky moves the ball forward not far maybe a yard maybe to the four yard line where it'll be second down goal to go for oak ridge at the riverdale i believe officially the four yard line we're down to four minutes, 33 seconds to play. We're in the first quarter of this ball game. The winner advances to the final four in the state of Tennessee and with an opportunity, one win away from the state championship ball game. 
Now, where will that ball game be? The winner of this game is are they still in the seeds, or is it already? It'll in, be at Mar- it, it, Wayne Maribel. If but is that because of the seed, or is that yes. because, is that already determined? Yeah, it's already determined. So here come the Wildcats to the line. Second down, goal to go. Ball's at the four. Zelliger at quarterback, and he'll hand it to Rocky, and Rocky once again runs into a wall. And not a whole lot there. Might have gotten to the three-yard line. We're now to be third down goal to go. He's trying to test the middle part of that uh, Riverdale line. It's been tough going. Wildcats have been able to move the ball in the air in this one. Bradley's been on target so far. The Wildcats have it officially at the three-yard line. Two-yard line, I think. Two-yard yeah. line, thank you. As the Wildcats wait for the play, it's to get in here. Got the right personnel. Rocky's going to come out of the ball game. I'm expecting to see personally, uh, uh, let's see if Zilliger just runs the ball in once again. The um, up to the line will come the, the Wildcats. Zilliger from the shotgun rolls, looks, fires, end zone. Bez Smith, incomplete. Well, I thought he had it. I, I guess he was out of bounds. I, I think it's, he caught it. And I think he was out of bounds. You know, it looks like Vez Smith just goes out and runs and stops and turns around. Kind of kind of know where your feet are. But, you know, what you hate right now is you, I don't think Oak Ridge wants a field goal right here. Um, it, you know, it's fourth and two, and I don't think field goals are, are going to beat uh, Riverdale. But they're going to bring the, the field goal unit, I guess, onto the field, or they're just going to bring the double tight end set. I think that's the case. Wildcats have it fourth down, goal to go. Ball is at the two-yard line. The Riverdale Warrior fans come to their feet once again. Up to the line they'll come. Wildcats try to get it in with Rocky Flood. He's not going to make it. Pye will never do it. They tried the middle three times, and the Warriors hold out the Wildcats at the goal line. And that you're uh, – you're right. Uh, that's tough, as the but they'll take over the two-yard line. Well, you know, I tell you what, I give Coach Blade credit. Uh, again, I don't think a field goal is going to do you any good right there. You got to score touchdowns against this team. Um, they just went with power football. It, 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 they basically won the game for, for Oak Ridge last week at uh, at Bradley, and that time they just couldn't quite get it in. Would have liked to see maybe a you know a fake one way and a rollout. Maybe let Bradley decide what to do. Almost like the last play that they ran, but uh, Coach didn't see it that way, and uh, at least. Uh, Riverdale's got a long field to go. They'll start over at the two-yard line. The handoff goes to number three, and he's belted at the line of scrimmage. Zach Hughes and one other Wildcat drop him at that point. It'll bring up for Riverdale. Second down and about nine yards to go. They might have actually lost a yard. They're going to say they lost a yard, so it'll be second down and 11. We're down to 250 to play in the first quarter in a scoreless ball game. Oak Ridge and the Riverdale Warriors here at Murfreesboro Riverdale High School. The quarterback for them is is a, a sophomore, as I mentioned, Dylan Woodruff. He brings them up. They run the wing T. Wildcats stack the line there. They've got a double wing. Man comes in motion here to the left, and he gets the pitch and moves the ball forward up to around the six-yard line where it'll be third down and long facing Riverdale. As O'Farrell and i um, not, not sure, sure may have been another in, a Wildcat. I can't really tell who that number was, David. We apologize for the sound quality all the way from Murfreesboro. The phones are kind of acting up a bit here. Well, hopefully you can hear what's going on. It's a scoreless ball game right now. We're in the first quarter, 2.06 to play in the first period. The Warriors have it third down, five yards to go. The ball is just across the five-yard line up to around the seven. And here comes Riverdale to the line. Wildcats forced them to punt on their first drive. Handoff goes. The quarterback's running it. Double reverse. Boom. Elliott Norman grabs him, and he's tackled at the 10-yard line, and they'll be forced to punt once again. The Wildcat defense doing good work. Field position's a key. Obviously, they didn't get, well, it's pretty close. At where they see the spotting of the ball, we'll see exactly where it is. Uh, David, it looks like they're short by a couple yards. Easy. They're surely, I mean, right? I mean, there's... They're on the 11, and the, the marker looks like it's all the way on at the 12 or so. So, I mean, it's to me, it doesn't even look like it's close. I, I failed to find out before the ball game where the officials were from. We've got a scoreless ball game. We're late in the first quarter. Change our mark. And you, let's see. They're going to stretch them, and it is not a first down. It is going to be fourth down yeah, and a yard. That's crazy. And uh, Riverdale. Uh, he, the head coach is looking at his staff, and uh, let's see if they try it. Well, the punt team, it's smart football. You don't you don't go for it right there. Not I mean, there. I mean, not in, not in a 0-0 game, first quarter. I mean, you know, you may have to do something like that, you know, later on in the ball game, but you've got a 0-0 game. It's too risky to risk that on the 10-yard line. They've had several kicks blocked this year. Let's see what the Wildcats can do. The punter is kicking from his own end zone. 
And Brady Hull standing back at the 50-yard line. It's fourth down in about a yard. Here's the snap. The kick. The kick is blocked by Cameron Gregg. He got it off barely. It's going to roll up to around the 41-yard line. Cameron Gregg blocks yet another kick. Yeah, he did, David. And I'm not too sure. Look, I was I had the binoculars on, and I'm not too sure. But obviously, the, the referee, but he kind of overshot it and hit the leg. So he got a little a piece of it. But again, Cam has blocked his fifth, sixth, seventh. I, I mean, every time there's a big play in the in special teams, you can look for Cam, and he's going to be in there somewhere. So the Wildcat offense, once again, great field position with a minute 17 to play in the first quarter and a very fast moving very fast moving first quarter. Wildcats failed to score ahead at first and goal at the five yard line. Weren't able to score but pinned them back enough. And the Wildcat offense is on the field. They were able to move the ball on their first drive. Just couldn't score. Zelliger at quarterback from the Riverdale 45 yard line. Scoreless ball game. Handoff goes Rocky Flood and Rocky's belted. We keep trying the middle and there's just nothing there. Scott, I mean, they've, they've tried and tried. There's been nothing there. Nope. You know, maybe they, that's one of the things that they're trying to get them tired. And maybe you come back and, and maybe that's successful in the second half. And it's exactly what they, you know, what they did last week at Bradley. They just, you know, pounded it, pounded it, pounded it. Finally, you've got some big holes. But, uh, you know, it's a little early and these guys still have some fresh legs. So, or, you know, maybe they're just going to try to, to, to fake it one way now and, and come back with some type of a play action pass off of that play. Three receivers split to the right side. Second down, 10 yards to go. The ball at the 45. The pitch will go to the Wildcat running back in the backfield. Elliot Norman tripped as he gains about two yards. Elliot tried to get outside, and that uh, as we were down to about 32 seconds and counting in the first quarter, it's going to bring up for the Wildcats third down and about seven yards to go. The Wildcats have been able to move the ball through the air here in the early going. Wildcats have been kind of stymied trying to run the ball. As we're down, ticking it on down to 15 seconds, I believe, the Wildcats, let's see if they have to get another playoff before the end of the first quarter. And you have a better look at it than I do. As uh, we're down to six, five seconds, and that'll be the final play of the first quarter. So we've played one quarter of football here at Riverdale High School. We've got a scoreless ball game. We're on 92.7, and we'll take a break. And this is another TargetTrader.com timeout. We'll be back in 60 seconds. We do. Welcome back to Riverdale High School, opening play of the second quarter. The Wildcats have it third down, about eight yards to go. The ball at the Riverdale 45, and before we can get started, flags are down on the play. Scott, uh, a lot of people listening to us back at home. Yeah, I want to say a special get well wish to uh, Bill Hatmaker. I know Bill's unable to uh, come to the game. He hasn't missed uh, very many in the last probably 30 years, but uh, Bill unable to come, facing some surgery on, on Tuesday. So, Bill, I hope you're doing well, and uh, good luck Tuesday. So far, your grandson's playing pretty well, so that's a, that's a good thing. So far, absolutely. And it's you're a, talking to Bill, not me. It's a Right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's a five-yard step-off against Oak Ridge, making it now third down at about 13. Zelliger from the shotgun. Drops pass, looks, crossed away to a wide open Rocky Flood down the field oh, 30, then he drops my it. Goodness. Was that Rocky? Yes. It was. That was an easy first down all the way down oh. to the 25 yard line. And that's about the farthest pass that I think they've thrown to Rocky all, all year long. And he was so wide open there. He was probably thinking touchdown. That should have been caught, and the Wildcats will be forced to punt. Boy, what a tough break for the Wildcats. And again, nice play. You, you go out one way, then you throw back all the way to, to a streaking Rocky Flood. Nice pass. He just couldn't come down with it, David. Tough break for the Wildcats. Drew Stokes punts. It's a fair catch made inside the 10-yard line, all the way back at the 7. And the Wildcats, once again, don't – 
take advantage of pretty good field position and the Oak Ridge defense will come back out on the field. We're in the second quarter in a scoreless ball game. This is a uh, high scoring Riverdale offense. And so far, the Wildcat defense has done a good job. Field position has been key, especially on the previous drive. Let's see what they can do against the wing T now. Uh, another one here, David. You know, and again, you're taught, you know, you stay at the 10-yard line, and if the punt goes over your head, you let it go. The return guy for them actually backs up, and, and now again, the Oak Ridge has got, uh, or Riverdale has horrible field position starting out on their six-yard line. Quarterback is Woodruff, and he'll hand it to the back, and he's belted by Jeff Card and company right at the line of scrimmage. Just not a whole lot of yardage there. It'll bring up second down at about uh, about nine yards to go. One thing I can tell you, if the game continues to be like this, we'll be home in no time. Well, I've got to go to Atlanta, as a matter of fact, and, you know, it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt me to, at all to have a, a quick game. But, hey, as long as Oak Ridge got more points at the end of the night, I could care less how long it is. Second down, nine yards to go. Officially, they move the ball to the 10-yard line. The Wildcats and Riverdale Warriors scoreless. We're, we're on 92.7, 107.3 FM, and Faith 1240 AM. The Warriors from Riverdale High School. Quarterback, where the man comes in motion, once again will drop back to pass. Rolling in a lot of trouble. Almost sacked. Is about to be, and he blasts the pass. Is caught. Oh, man. And they pick up a first down. Wildcats got so much pressure, they were right in on him with Hughes and Ingham. But they were able to complete the pass up to around the 19-yard line where it'll be a first down. Tough luck in Oak Ridge. I tell you what, they did a good job. They strung it out, and it uh, looks like a couple. I know Ingham uh, had a jersey, but uh, couldn't quite get, get the quarterback down. Quarterback finds his fullback out in the flats enough for the first down. That's the second time that that's happened as the Warriors come up to the line. They've got a really big center as he brings them up once again. Two receivers to the left. The pitch will go deep to the tailback in the backfield, trying to get outside and moves the ball forward for a gain of 10, 11, 12 down the field. And he's going to take it all the way down the field. Wow. That is a touchdown for the Riverdale Warriors. Just kept weaving his way through, and they take it to the house. The score is by Jason Bolin, I believe, and he takes it in. Actually, it's Adam Davenport who takes it in for the score, and it's a 6 nothing lead, and that time, it looked like he wasn't going to get two or three yards, but then all of a sudden he just busted out of there, and there was nobody back there to catch he him. He did, and, you know, he just outran everybody too, David. That guy's got some wheels. Again, Oak Ridge had him hemmed in and uh, just let him get out, and then he just hit that sideline, and nobody from Oak Ridge is going to catch him. And they'll go for the extra point. The kicker is Matt Rust. He's had several blocked this year, they say. Here's the kick. It's on its way, and it is... Good. Seven to nothing. Murfreesboro Riverdale on top of the Oak Ridge High School Wildcats, just like that. And they have the lead. Let's take a quick break. We're down to 10:39 to play second quarter. We'll be back with the Riverdale kickoff in 60 seconds. Nope. Nope. I think you got to quit going and trying to hit the middle too. Right? Yeah, I think you're right. Rocky should have caught that. You got you know, to catch that. Open, that's, that's, I mean, that's, that's an easy pass to catch. Yeah. yeah. Coming yeah. over here, I mean, that's just yeah. an easy, easy yeah. pass. I think I was scooting, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Here's the kickoff by Riverdale. It's short. It's going to be fielded by Rocky, I believe, at the 15. Rocky fled to the 20. Rocky fled to the 25 to the 30-yard line. I got excited there for a second but because it looked like he was about to just bust through a hole and take it. But he's dropped by the Riverdale Warriors right at the 30-yard line. And the Wildcat offense will come onto the field. Trailing for the first time in the ballgame, 7 to nothing. Well, you know, during the break, David, you mentioned it. You know, Oak Ridge has squandered two opportunities. Uh, they, you know, they, they have the ball first and goal, I believe, from the three, maybe the four-yard line. Come away with no points, and you come out in the next possession. You know, you got a big play, and you don't convert. So Oak Ridge right now is just kind of shooting themselves in the foot. First and 10, Zelliger rolls to pass. He's had it all day. Fires a pass. It's going to be caught by Brady Hill and blasted at the 35-yard line. It's a game of about five. Brady Hull's become the leading receiver for the Wildcats. Keenan Jackson on the stop for your Riverdale Warriors. It's a gain of about five, five and a half yards up to the 35-yard line where it'll be second down and about five yards to go. 
Wildcats split out uh, Ethan Wheeler along with Brady Hull and Bez Smith to the left, Rashad Gray to the right. The Wildcats have one lone running back back there with Zelliger. Second and five. He's going to pass it to Brady. Brady Hull moves the ball for a first down close to it at the 40-yard line. I'll tell you, Brady Hull's been very active here in the early going. You know, I believe it's five catches for him. Again, you know, it's funny, that this offense, you know, I remember Brady was a, a big, you know, caught seven, eight balls in, in one game. And then Ethan caught several, you know, several. And then other than that, they really haven't gotten involved. So, uh, but uh, Brady's already caught four or five balls already. Wildcats do pick up a first down at their own 41-yard line or close to it. It's just across the 40. Oak Ridge comes up with the eye. The fullback is Elliot Norman. Tailback is Rocky Flood. They're off sides. The Warriors jumped off sides. The flag went down. The Let's see if the, the penalty yard is to see if the Wildcats jump first. I don't think so. Looked to me like uh, it is encroachment against the defense. So that'll be a five-yard step off uh, against Riverdale. They'll walk the ball up to the 46-yard line where it'll be first down and five yards to go. 9.31 to play here in the first half. Seven to nothing. Riverdale on top. Vez Smith splits out to the far right along with Brady Hull. One receiver to the left. Oak Ridge from the eye once again. Brad Zelliger at quarterback. And he'll hand it off to Elliott, and he trips as he moves the ball forward for maybe a yard at most on the play. It'll bring up second down and about, uh, we'll call it still, five yards to go. The one play that stands out in my mind the last time we were here was that fumble that went bouncing in the air right here in front of us, and the guy just picked it off and, and took it. On, in a, on a dead run, uh, on a yes. dead sprint. Yes. yes. Yeah. And I was, just, I was thinking about that when the guy was sprinting for their touchdown. Yeah, just, I do remember that now. As the it was officially a gain of about a yard. It'll bring up second down and three and a half yards to go for first for the Wildcats. The Riverdale coaching staff is not happy with their alignment, and I think Riverdale is going to have to use one of their timeouts. We'll take it with them. We'll send it back to the station. This uh, timeout is once again brought to you by the TargetTrader.com, and we'll be back to Riverdale High School following this 30-second timeout. What is that noise? Back here on um FM 92.7. Taylor, you might want to check on uh, prepradio.com as the Wildcats have it second down, three yards to go. From the I formation, the Wildcats come up with two receivers to the right. Zulliger to pass, or will he run? Bradley's going to run it. He's across the 50 and pushed out of bounds right before he picks up, right after he picks up a first down at the Riverdale 49-yard line. We need to make sure that prepradio.com is working. We had some people telling us that it is not. So, Taylor, if you'll handle that situation for us, as the Wildcats do have it first and 10 at the Riverdale 48. Just, it's terrible when you're on the road. You've got so many things that you're concerned about the game, but when there's technical issues and it never seems to happen when you're at home, it always seems that when we're a long and, ways away. And I am no help because I don't know what all these courts and stuff do, so I, I feel sorry, especially when Taylor's not here helping. Actually, that might be somebody that we need to get is uh, Taylor up here. The ball's at the 48-yard line. The pitch will go to Rocky Flood. Rocky has a big hole, moves the ball close to the 40-yard line. It's a gain of about eight. The Wildcats have shown the ability, Scott, to move the ball, to move the ball against the um, – against the uh, Warriors, and that is another game. That's the best run of the night for Rocky, for sure. It is. Picked up by eight. Just, again, the power football Oak Ridge runs the toss sweep to the right side, and Rocky picks up eight. The Wildcats have it second down and two yards to go. Is it just me, or is this Riverdale crowd very quiet? It sounds like it's very, very quiet. And I, I think I think they're a little I think they're a little worried about this game, David. You know, Oak Ridge came out and dominated the first quarter. You know, they get a 79-yard touchdown, but Oak Ridge has played extremely well so far. Second down, two yards to go. Zelliger brings them up once again. He's going to pass across the middle. A bullet pass is incomplete. That's another another interference. pass interference. Yep. Rashad Gray and was interfered is. with, and they the same. Uh, 
person who kind of reminds me of you in some ways, uh, getting, <laughs> getting up once again and upset. He was upset the last time, and it's going to be pass interference again. It, and, and it was. I mean, you know, you go up for the ball, and number 44, one of their linebackers, uh, good-looking linebacker, just, uh, you know, got him before he, he did. He, uh, the ball was still while the ball was in the air, and to me it was clearly pass interference. It is 7 to nothing, Riverdale. The Wildcats have the ball now inside the 30. The Wildcats have been down this way before. We're down to 7.45 to play. We're in the first half in a 7 to nothing game. Riverdale on top. The Wildcats had it first and goal at the 5, unable to get any points on their opening drive. Let's see what the Wildcats can do to try to respond to the Riverdale score. Ryan Hall splits to the right side. The Wildcats have two receivers, make it three to the left side. Wildcat quarterback is Zelliger. He's under center this time. One lone running back. He's going to pass, floats it. Down the field, pass is incomplete. There was a little holding back there, but no call. But, you know, the Wildcats have already had their taste of a couple of pass interference. Bradley got popped as he delivered the pass. Not a bad-looking play. Pretty good coverage down the field by Riverdale. It's second and ten. The ball is resting at the Warrior 26-yard line. The Wildcats moving right to left, trailing seven to nothing here in the first quarter. First half, that is. I'm sorry. Second quarter has been so quickly flying on by. As we're here at Murfreesboro, the Wildcats have Ryan Hall split to the right. Three receivers to the left, including, um, let's see, Rocky Flood. Actually, the Wildcats have four receivers that way. Now, Elliot Norman comes in motion, and he's going to throw it to Ryan. And Ryan moves the ball forward and popped again Boy, got popped. after a gain of about five up to around the 20-yard line. A couple guys have been popped in this one. Brady Hall got popped, and Ryan definitely took a shot, held onto the ball. It's second down and a long five. It is, David. Actually, third down and five. Third so big, five. big play in this ball game. You know, again, you know, do you if you don't get it here, do, do you go for it? They're in field goal range. They're in field goal range. Do you, maybe it depends on how far it is to, to go. But uh, I think you're in field goal range. Put got to put some points up on the board. Warrior fans now making a little noise. Zelliger comes up once again. Four receivers to the left, one to the right, up to the line. Oak Ridge. Elliott comes in motion again. This time to the right. And he wants to pass it, and it's going to be caught. And this time it's a first down Ooh, to close. the 15-yard line right in front of the sticks. He stays in bounds. We're down to 647 and counting. I think that's a first down there, Scott, right in front of the sticks. The officials look at it. It is yeah. indeed first and 10 Oak Ridge. Same play. It is same play. I tell you, Oak Ridge caught a break, and I tell you why. I don't know if you saw, but Elliot yeah, Norman, was he was, well, he, he was going in motion, and he cut up toward the line of scrimmage. A, a good probably second, uh, you know, uh, before the play. And I thought he did what, it on the first play. He, I didn't see it the first time, but he definitely did it that way. Now these get, you know, now the the, the fans are really upset because you know it, you got to do the old call it both ways. Ball's at the 16-yard line. Shotgun once again. The Wildcats moving right to left here, trailing seven to nothing. Zelliger wants to run it himself and will moves the ball forward inside the 10-yard line down to the Riverdale eight-yard line. The Wildcat offensive line's looking good here in the early going. It really is, and again, you know, boy, don't, wouldn't you love to have that big long touchdown, that 79-yard touchdown back? But uh, you can't do that. And Oak Ridge right now is just, um, you know, mixing up the throws, mixing up the the the, the runs, and that time it looked like it was actually a. Um, an option play, Bradley was holding the ball up around his chest like he may have actually tried to pitch that ball. Six minutes to play and counting in the second quarter, 7 to nothing. The Wildcats have it second and two at the Riverdale eight-yard line. Shotgun once again for the junior quarterback. Two receivers to his right, two to his left. Bradley's going to run it. Bradley is popped, but I think he has just enough yardage, and there's some pushing, and Jose Valadon better be careful. We don't need a personal foul right here. As they move the ball to the five-yard line, the kind of a late hit, like kind of a shove by Jose on one of the Warriors. Ball's at the five-yard line. It's going to be close enough for the chains. They're going to bring the chains on the field. If your business is interested in supporting Wildcat Sports on these multiple radio stations, talk to Jason Wilson, the general sales manager, at 414-1699. They have multiple stations. Multiplied listeners, the chains are stretched, and what is the call? It is going to be so close, but it is indeed first and goal, Oak Ridge. Balls at the five-yard line in a seven-to-nothing ball game. It's a very fast-moving ball game, and so far the Riverdale offense is, and this is what Coach Blade has told me, has has really, with the exception of the one long drive, has been kept off the field, and that's exactly what they needed to do. But the Wildcats have got to get some points. We've had it first and goal at the five already once in this game. Came away with nothing. We've got it there again. First down goal. 
Bradley Zilliger, quarterback, two receivers to his right, two to the left, wants to pass out of the end zone, pass is caught right at the line of scrimmage. Kick catch is made out in the flat, very well defended that time. It was to Tyrus Henderson. It's going to be second down and goal to go at the five-yard line. He got stuck too, David. Fortunately for uh, for Tyrus, he ended up once he caught the ball, kind of a, caught it blindly, looking back, and he was going toward the line of scrimmage. The quarterback came up and hit him low. If he hits him high, it could could have very easily taken his head off. Vez Smith, Tyrus Henderson split to the right, two receivers to the left. Four and a half minutes to play, second and goal at the five yard line. Man coverage on the receivers. Zulliger under center, hands it to Rocky. Rocky moves the ball towards the goal line. It might have been Elliot Norman to the goal line, and he takes it to the one-yard line. So Elliot Norman was the running back. The ball officially, they're going to put it down at the one. It'll be third down, goal to go. It's actually inside the one at around the 10-inch around the, uh, line. From the goal line as the Wildcat big boys come into the game once again. We've tried this before with the big guys. Wildcats, third down, goal to go. Ball is at the one-foot line. The Wildcats trailing 6-7 to nothing, 3.48 to play. Power eye to the right. Zelliger at quarterback will roll and rot, dive to the end zone. Touchdown, Oak Ridge. The Wildcats score with three minutes and 41 seconds to play in the first half, and it's a 7-6 to six ball game. I tell you what, what a nice drive. Oak Ridge just takes the ball, mix it up very well, going left, going right, up the middle. Pass plays, run plays, nice drive capped off by a one-yard scamper by Bradley Zilliger. The winner of this game will take on the Maribel Rebels, who are just blasting the Bearden Bulldogs tonight. Wildcats have laid a guy onto the field for this extra point, this important extra point. The holder is Zilliger. The kicker is Beeler. 3.41 to play, 7-6. to six. Riverdale on top. Here's the snap. The hold. The kick is on its way. It looks good, and it is good. We've got a tie ball game, ladies and gentlemen. 7-7 seven, seven our score, 3.41 to play second quarter. We'll be back with a Wildcat kickoff in 60 seconds. He's going to need to talk to. Let me let me get can, can you crack that. Well, let me get up here. I'll try. I'll have Taylor call my phone. The other, the other Taylor. I, I want to hear what they're saying. Or or not. <laughs> Here's the kickoff by the Wildcats fielded at the end zone. It's a touchback. Be first down, 10 yards to go, and the happiest guy on the stadium right now is Brett Beeler. It'll be first and 10. The Wildcats tying the ball game, seven to seven. And this high-powered offense has kind of been stymied a bit. And this Riverdale crowd is quiet. It's very quiet. And again, you know, with uh, three minutes and 40 seconds left to go in this uh, first half, that's a lot of time for this team to for uh, Riverdale to score again. Oak Ridge, two out of their uh, first three defensive uh, stands have been phenomenal. Uh, the last one, of course, they gave up the long touchdown run. But other than that, this defense has played extremely well, David. Taylor Clark, if you're listening to me, please call my cell phone. It'll be first down, 10 yards to go. Double wing set, receiver to the left, handoff to the running back who moves the ball forward for a gain of about three yards or so. It'll bring up second down and seven. Three and a half minutes to play here in the second quarter in a 7-7 ball game as we broadcast here on FM 92.7, 107.3 FM, and Faith 1240 AM. And um, I'm getting texts from people who perhaps are listening to us on Prep Radio as the it is second down and seven yards to go. Quarterback will hand it number two, try oh, to get hold. wide, and he's going to be blasted after a gain of about three. It'll bring up third down and about three yards to go. Three minutes to play. Taylor, if you uh, can find somebody who's listening to Prep Radio, it's going to be third down and about two yards to go. We've got a 7-7 ball game, Scott. You surprised how close it is? I am. I, I really am. And, again, you know, other than that one long play, you know, this is a 7 nothing. Could be 14 
even more maybe, you know. So Oak Ridge has played very well. Big play right now, David, third and three uh, with two minutes, 37 seconds left to go in this first half. Quarterback is under center. Double wing man comes in motion. Quarterback's in trouble. Hands it. Boom! He's blasted behind the line of scrimmage, and they'll be forced to punt, and the Wildcat offense will come back onto the field. Wow, what a great, uh, again, what a great job by the defense. They, uh, David, they faked a couple of handoffs, and from here it's hard to tell where that, uh, where the ball is, and that play took so long to develop. Jeff Carr, and I believe Cam Gregg was also in there on that play. It takes so long to to uh, to, to to happen. The uh, defense did a, a good job of getting pressure. Let's see if the Wildcats can block a kick here. The snap is high. The punt is away. High kick, short. Brady feels it, and a fair catch is made at the 44-yard line. The Wildcats have a minute 54. Three timeouts on the clock, I believe, maybe two. And they have uh, the ball in good field position. Ball is at the 44-yard line. The Wildcats moving right to left in a 7-7 seven, seven ball game. The winner plays in the final four in the state of Tennessee. And that'll be at... Um, uh, perhaps Maribel. It looks like uh, the... Uh, Unless there's a huge comeback. Yes, but most definitely. As Wild Wildcat offense is on the field, 7-7 seven, seven our score. The Oak Ridge Band will be playing. Zelliger at quarterback. Three receivers to his left. Hand off Rocky. Rocky moves the ball to the 50-yard line. It's a gain of about five. The Oak Ridge offensive line, Kevin Crane, Bryce Wesh, Chris Ramsey, Aaron Flowers, Moving, the moving, doing a great job against this big Riverdale line. As that's a gain of about five on the play. Second down and five yards to go. Down to a minute 32 to play. The Wildcats, I guess, uh, not in much of a hurry here right now. Of course, you don't want to turn it over and give them momentum heading into halftime. But you're at the midfield stripe with a minute 22 to play. Zulliger at quarterback once again. Like we might have been offside. Zelliger's going to throw back to a man. It's out of bounds incomplete. I guess that was a miscommunication. Not a bad looking play, though, if there had been a receiver on that sideline there. Yeah, it looks like Rocky kind of went up the hash marks and Bradley was thrown it toward the sideline. So uh, one, somebody, one of the two, did the wrong thing, but uh, wasn't anything there. It's not going to hurt you at all to have an incomplete pass in that situation. Now third and five, David, if you don't get it here, you can end up having to punt it away and giving them the ball. So another big first, first third down for the Oak Ridge. Minute 14 to play here in the first half. 7-7 seven, seven the score. Zelliger at quarterback. Back to pass all day. Looks down the middle. Passes. Oh. Incomplete. In and out of the hands of Brady Hill. That would have been another Big completion and a big first down, but that's twice already in this game. Wildcats wow. have had it in their hands and just couldn't catch you it. you got to catch that one. A big play, nice throw, very nice throw by Bradley Zelliger. And, again, what also that does, stops the clock. Got one minute, seven seconds left to go in this first half. Drew Stokes to punt. And I tell you, Bradley Zelliger is on his game tonight. He has been very efficient with his throws. Stokes to punt. Good snap. Little pressure, kick is away, high, long, driving, spiraling kick. It's going to roll into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. So the Wildcats back on defense, 59 seconds to play in the first half of this ball game. The Wildcats in a 7-7 ball game. They scored on a long run. The Wildcats have driven the ball several times, and I know when Ben Gavin does the stats here at halftime, the stats are going to be one-sided, I, I think, in terms of, for the most part. But uh, unfortunately, the Wildcats had it first and goal at the five, didn't get any points. Had it on the other side of the 50, didn't get any points. But they've been able, the good news is they've been able to move the ball against Riverdale. But it's still just a tie game. 7-7, seven, seven, Warriors first and 10. Quarterback hands it to the running back right up the middle. Nothing there. Wildcats stacking with Tyler Jarnigan and Jared O'Farrell. Uh, along with a host of other Wildcats, including Jeff Card. And that's no real surprise there as we're down to 45 seconds and counting. It'll be second down and about nine yards to go. You know, it looks like uh, Riverdale's just ready to go in the halftime, having this thing tied, and we'll come out in the second half and see what uh, what's going on. They're doing nothing. That's yours. Oh, thank they're you. doing, yeah, they're, they're doing nothing to, to any kind of a two-minute offense at all. I was afraid you might have put something in it. That is it second down and about nine yards to go. Quarterback is going to be pitching it to the tailback, and he's got good running room, and he's going to be pushed out of bounds by the Wildcats at around the 33-yard line. And it'll be a first down with 17 seconds to play. That play's been effective for them twice, but there's not a whole lot of time here. Tyrus Henderson on the stop. Tyler Jarnigan checks back into the ball game. Deron Williams checks out 7-7 seven, seven the score. 17 seconds to play in the first half. Riverdale's got the ball at their own 34-yard line. 
Wildcats playing with Chris Golston at safety. Cam Gregg, the sec secondary is the same. Let's see if they throw it. They are. What about rolling? Pass caught in the flats. Got to make a tackle here. And Cam Gregg grabs him and pushes him out of bounds. Pushed him out of bounds after a gain of about two at the 38-yard line. They say he stayed in bounds. And that's the end of the first half. We're down to one second. No time. They signaled that he was running out of bounds. It looked... And that is the first half, and the Riverdale quarter or coaching staff is upset. But there's officials standing right over there. They saw where the guy went, and obviously he stayed in bounds. Well, he did. And, and again, I mean, the, the official, I saw it from here. You could see the official, you know, saying that he stayed in bounds. And, uh, you know, this crowd doesn't like it, but I could, I could clearly, clearly see it because. Um, I, and I'm sure these guys could do so. Uh, I, I don't. I just don't understand these guys. Have, maybe they've been spoiled so long that, uh, that now they're in a game. That was, that was a good call. All I see is the the official is pointing at their coach, and they're walking off the field because the, the coaching staff for Riverdale went out on the field to challenge the official. The high school football team I have ever seen, probably bar none, was the 90, 95 yeah, or whatever so. Riverdale had eight players that signed with the SEC teams. We, you know, we played them there in 93, 94, and 95 consecutive years. We played them some at Middle Tennessee. We played them one year at Blankenship, actually, in the playoffs. But uh, I agree. And Alvin Duke, remember him? I, they, I remember him with the Vanderbilt. Coppins or whatever his name was. They had several guys that just uh, went on. And, uh, uh, I and remember if, they had a big, huge defensive end. I can't remember. I, I thought of his name earlier driving up here, and I couldn't, I couldn't tell you what that is now. Well, the second half is about set. The Warriors are getting ready to kick off to Oak Ridge. Back to receive it is Tyrus Henderson standing back at the five-yard line. Here's the kick. It's a line drive kick, and it is going to go out of bounds. That's a penalty. Goes out at the one-yard line. The Wildcats, if they elect to take it, they can take it at the 35-yard line, or they can force Riverdale to re-kick. And I think, by the looks of it, Oak Ridge just wants to take the ball at the 35-yard line. And then uh, the defense for the Warriors back out on the field. It's a 7-7 ball game, the opening play of the third quarter. As uh, the Warriors, as the Wildcats will be going from right to left here. And here comes Oak Ridge. Rashad Gray will be a receiver split to the left along with Ethan Wheeler. Got uh, Jose Valadon. We got Bryce Wesh, Aaron Flowers, Chris Ramsey, uh, along with Kevin Crane. The Wildcat quarterback is Zulliger. Three receivers to the right, first and 10. Oak Ridge, the ball at the 35 yard line. In motion goes Wheeler. Bradley's going to run the ball himself, and he just moves the ball forward for a gain of about 5 or 10 or 15 as he breaks through all the way down to the 48 yard line. I thought. I thought he was stopped at the line of scrimmage. Then all of a sudden, Bradley Zelliger came busting out of there and picks up a first down. Wow, what a play. And again, you know, he was stopped and went right up the middle, faked the ball once, went right up the middle. And you think he's, you know, he's gained two. And all of a sudden, you see him spin out and goes for another 12, 13 yards. Great first down play by the Wildcats. Ball's at the 48-yard line of Oak Ridge. And Oak Ridge playing with a lot of confidence right now. That's just a lot of confidence as the Wildcats come up with receivers. Two to the left, two to the right. Shotgun once again for Zelliger. The ball at the Oak Ridge 48. We're in the third quarter in a 7-7 ball game. Zelliger rolls to pass. Dumps it in the flat. Nobody was there. Might have been knocked down at the line. It'll bring up second down and 10 yards to go. Let me ask you a question. Okay. You know, um, this offense to me has changed over the last couple weeks. Moving Jose Valdon to the left tackle. Is that one of the keys to this? I or? think it is. I mean, you know, Kevin Crane has done, a, I think, an excellent job at center. If you remember, some of the snaps were not getting back to Zelliger, and it's allowed – Jose to be a little bit more involved initially in the blocking, and I think I think it is. I think it's a big a big reason. Here comes Oak Ridge to the line, two receivers to the right, second and ten, ball at the 48-yard line, four-man front for the Warriors. Zelliger will run it himself. Got a block to the outside. He's at the 50, at the 45, and has a first down at the 40. And down the field he goes, 30, 25. Zelliger at the 15. Zelliger at the 10. Zelliger all the way down to the three-yard line where it'll be first and goal, Oak Ridge. Wow, again, another great play by Bradley Zelliger's second effort. You think he's going to be tackled down here at the, you know, maybe for a four or five-yard gain. Breaks it straight down the sideline, outran the defensive end, and now what a opening drive for the Wildcats. They were down here earlier, couldn't punch it in, David. They is, I think it's very important they get some points out of this, hopefully a touchdown. I'm telling you, Bradley Zelliger is playing the best game of his career tonight. As the Wildcats come to the line with receivers to left, the line of scrimmage is the two-yard line of Riverdale. 7-7 seven to seven our score, 11-17 to play. Eye formation, one running back. 
Here comes the handoff. Rocky Flood to the goal line. Not across, though. Second down. Goal to go at the one-yard line. 7-7 seven to seven our score. Final eight teams playing tonight. And, uh, you know, half the teams will end happy and the others will get ready for basketball. And the Wildcats have the ball at the one-yard line. And once again, it'll be for Oak Ridge. First down, second down, goal to go at the one. Zulliger under center. Wildcats in a 7-7 game. Zulliger will once again move the ball forward to the goal line and take it across for a touchdown. Oak Ridge scores. Oak Ridge scores with 10-41 to play in the third quarter. And Oak Ridge has a 13-7 lead. Wow, very nice drive. Of course, the big play, Bradley Zulliger goes down the left sideline for uh, 50 yards. And again, Oak Ridge up 13-7, the extra point. David, you go back to that first drive. How would you like to at least now have gotten a field goal out of that? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, hindsight's 20-20. Here's the kick. It's on its way by Brett Beeler. It is good. Oak Ridge has the lead once again, 14 to seven. It has the lead for the first time tonight. 14 to seven, our score, 10-41 to play here in the third quarter as we broadcast here at Riverdale High School. We'll take a break. And this is another Target, the TargetTrader.com timeout. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Because he, 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 he had to be here when it's something is. Yeah, he hadn't been able to do all the first down. <laughs> Thank God, I'm big. You need to look at him. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to Riverdale High School. David Clary, Scott Munger, along with Ben Gavin and Mike Sheehan. Our engineers are Chuck and Taylor. As the Wildcats prepare to kick off, leading 14 to 7, 10:41 to play. Here's the kick by Beeler. It's a line drive squibbing kick. It's going to be fielded at the uh -oh, five, to the ten, to the 15, to the 20, to the 30, up the field, and then he's tackled nicely by the Wildcats. Ryan Hall at around the around the 35-yard line. Nice return. Not a great kick that time by Beeler. And the offense for the Riverdale Warriors comes out on the field. What a game, the Wildcats. And what a drive, Brett, uh, excuse me, Bradley Zelliger just, it was with the Bradley Zelliger drive. It, it was, and again, you know, he started off that, that whole drive, you know, making something out of nothing. He turned a, a one-yard gain into a 15, and he just went on from there. First down, 10 yards to go. Here come the Warriors now moving left to right. Look at Gulston playing so deep in the set safety back here as the quarterback will roll, pitch it to the running back in the backfield. Boom! He's blasted. Big hit by Ryan Hall behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the 34-yard line. Hardest hit of the year for Ryan Hall. Boy, a great defense that time by Oak Ridge all the way around. Uh, Cam Gregg did a great job. Uh, uh, Riverdale comes out, runs the option, ends up putting it on the corner. As soon as he gets it on the corner, Ryan Hall makes a nice stop for no gain. Second down, 10 yards to go, 10 minutes to play in the third quarter. The ball is at the 35-yard line of Riverdale. The Wildcats on top, 14-7 to here at Murfreesboro. Wing T formation, receiver to the right, quarterback back to pass. Feeling pressure, looks, wants to run it up the field and moves the ball for a first down up to the 45-yard line. Looked like there might have been some holding there, but, you know, I think it was just pretty good blocking. Quarterback saw nothing up the field. Turns it up the field and gains what appears to be a first down, and it is. Yeah, it is a first down, and I tell you what, I would really, you get ahead of this team, I would love to make the sophomore quarterback beat you throwing the ball. Yeah, because their their uh, strength has been their 1,500-yard 15 yard, 15 yard rusher, Odom, as the chains are brought onto the field, 14-7 to Oak Ridge, 9.38 to play. The Wildcats have looked strong on offense, just marching the ball on every drive. They've punted twice, and really, as we mentioned earlier, they had some lost opportunities as the chains are stretched. And it is going to be third down, I believe. And they're going to say inches. So it's going to be third down and about an inch to go for the Riverdale Warriors at the 45-yard line. Scott, the Warriors have some some uh, some athletes out on the field. They've got some speed. They've got some size. Right now, they look a little confused. Have you noticed that? They, they do. And uh, again, you know, this ball game is there's a lot of football left to be played. And uh, David, you know, they'll get a first down here. You never know what happens. But uh, Oak Ridge defense has just played absolutely outstanding football so far in this ball game. Ball is at the 45-yard line. Third down, less than a yard to go. Let's see if they just sneak the ball forward for a first down. And he does, and he has that first down to the 47-yard line. 
once again. West has beaten Anderson County tonight 55 to 12. Wow. So the Mavericks go down to defeat. So Wow, I didn't know West was that strong. Yeah, West uh West I believe beat Bearden, I think at one point Bearden, as yeah. uh, this year. So obviously and we've got a former Wildcat, Zach Stewart, playing for West right now as the Wildcats have the lead 14 to 7, but Riverdale has a first down, the ball at their own 47-yard line. Quarterback for them is Dylan Woodruff, and they move the ball forward for about seven. There's a helmet or two off, pushed back at around the 50. One of their big linemen, and he is big, lost his helmet as uh, it's a gain on the play of about four or five yards. They've got so much speed, Scott. Why don't they use it? You know, if you spread with this speed they have, if they spread out just a bit, you know, who knows what they could do offensively. Yeah, I, it's the same thing. I think what their, you know, their game plan is to do all that fake and it takes so long. I think Oak Ridge's defense is so much quicker than their offense, they can't utilize the speed. They can't utilize those misdirection plays. Second down, five yards to go. We're down to 8.20 to play third quarter. Quarterback with a man comes in motion. We'll pitch it to that guy in the backfield. He has a nice run, moves the ball up the sideline and pushed out of bounds at around, let's see, the 43-yard line of Oak Ridge, and that should be a Riverdale first down. We're at Murfreesboro Riverdale, the winner to play the Marable Rebels. And right now, it's a 14-7 lead. The Rebels, obviously, you know, they're always headed to the state uh, championship. And I think there's probably no surprise that uh, – they are headed to the Final Four, but I think I think the people across the state right now are thinking, what in the world is Oak Ridge doing in this position? As it's a third down and about a less than a yard to go once again. Fumble on the play, and he loses about five yards. All the way back to the 49-yard line. They only needed about an inch to get a first down, and he just lost it. Sophomore well, quarterback did, and it'll be fourth down fourth down and they'll be forced to punt. to punt boy what a costly mistake by Riverdale. kind of reminds me of the just, cookville game absolutely you know they're just going out to hand a regular handoff that you see you know 100 times a game the ball just slips out of his hands and a big loss for the uh, riverdale warriors on it, the play it's not incredibly cold out there i don't believe fourth down and more than five yards to go low snap picked up by the punter line drive kick nice one and brady hell is going to let it bounce the wildcats will have it at the five-yard line, 95 yards to drive. But once again, Coach Blade told me in his pregame interview, and he's never I've never heard a real coach say this the way he said it, we need to make them punt, which is obvious in football, but he meant it. I mean, he meant it. And the Wildcats have done just that. I think they had punted just a few times the entire season. And, and that's at least three times now, I believe. Is that right? There's, right. I think that's their third punt. You know, Oak Ridge had such a great rush on the punts. That time they, they didn't really get a good rush, and the ball was on the ground. It would have been a – could have been an easy block had they had the punt block on. Now let's see if the Wildcat offense, which has been so efficient, can move the ball again. They lead Oak Ridge, Oak Ridge leads 14 to 7. Zelliger at quarterback, and he's been a workhorse running the ball. This time it's going to be Rocky, and Rocky has no place to go. It's a Rocky first down for the Wildcats, and it'll be no gain. Boy, David, you know, I'm watching. I've got the binoculars out, and their defensive line, you got 63 and 75. Both of them are playing both ways are gassed. Number 75 playing over here on this right tackle stood straight up and barely even came off the ball. We're down to seven minutes to play. Second down, it's a loss of about two on the play. So not a great play at all for the Wildcats. The The ground game has been Bradley Zulliger here in this ball game. We're in the third quarter, 14 to seven Oak Ridge. The Wildcats trying to get out of trouble here in very poor field position. It's 12. Here comes Bradley running it and this time he stood up straight at the five yard line. It's gonna be third down and 10 yards to go. You don't wanna turn the ball over down here and kind of throw it up and, and get a turnover and an easy six points. But uh, this is a good uh, this is a good Riverdale offense. I mean, they haven't been sharp so far in this ball game, but you know, you don't wanna give them great field position unless the Wildcats get 10 yards here. They will be punting from their own end zone as it'll be third down and 10 yards to go. We appreciate you listening to our, to our broadcast. Um, tonight, wherever you might be, on PripRadio.com. I've got Chuck Stinson listening to our broadcast somewhere all over the uh, Internet. Third down, 10. The Riverdale fans come to their feet. Bradley wants to pass. Looks, 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 and is going to just run out of bounds. I thought early on he might have somebody to throw to, but there just wasn't there, anybody there, and he's going to be shy of a first down. The Wildcats will be 
will be uh, forced to punt. Drew Stokes will come into the ball game. You know, in that play, you're rolling out to your left. You have to have somebody open. It's so hard to roll to your left and then try to throw the ball to the middle of the field. If he's throwing the ball, if he's ro rolling that right, perhaps you can do that. It's a lot easier to do. Bradley just didn't have any uh, anybody open, so he had to tuck the ball and run. Let's see what the sophomore punter can do. Drew Stokes is punting from his end zone. 14-7 Oak Ridge, good snap. Kick is away, high wobbly kick. It's going to bounce and take a good Oak Ridge bounce. It's going to roll inside the 50, continue to roll all the way down to the 46-yard line. So great punt. Didn't flip the field perfectly, but they've got it on the other side of the 50-yard line. The Wildcat defense back on the field. That's all you can ask right there. You know, Drew Stokes didn't get a great punt off, but it, it, it's so, it hits so short, it rolls another 20 yards. So uh, about all you can expect your punter to do from that position. 14-7, Oak Ridge on top, 548 to play in the third quarter. From Riverdale High School, the winner plays Maryville in the semifinals in the state. The last time Oak Ridge was in the semifinals, 2005, when they beat this Riverdale team and went to the state championship game. One receiver to the left, double wing. First down, 10 yards to go. Their quarterback rolls to pass. Looks in the flat pass, is caught by number two. Breaks a couple tackles, picks up a first down. The, the initial tackle is broken, and the catch is made by Odom. And that is a first down. The Riverdale fans are coming to life here. And nice pass that time in the flat to a wide open man. It was. And I tell you what, I still want this kid to beat you. You know, I think right now, I think if you're Oak Ridge, you want this guy throwing. Uh, he doesn't have a, a real strong arm. That time he had a guy wide open in the flats and ended up picking up a first down. I sense a turnover coming. I hope you're right there as the ball is at the Oak Ridge 42-yard line. Quarterback is under center now. He's got two receivers, man comes in motion, quarterback to pass. Rolling, fires a pass, incomplete. Got belted from the backside by Jared O'Farrell as he delivered the pass. It's incomplete. Second down, 10 yards to go. Back-to-back -back pass plays for them. Nice play by Jared O'Farrell. And once again, I want to apologize to him. I know I interviewed him after the game. And I called him Will Farrell. So, wow. uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I do hate that. I don't know if he, you know, if anybody said anything to you, but as soon as it came out, I thought, That's, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> well, he's a great actor. Maybe Maybe, uh, maybe Jared Sunday will be that as it's second down 10 for Riverdale. 517 to play third quarter, 14-7, Oak Ridge in the lead. One receiver to the right, pressure, quarterback fires a pass, incomplete. Another big pop on the quarterback. This time it was by Alex Ingham who made the pop on the quarterback. It's now third down. 10 yards to go, and Riverdale's running game, they figure they can't get it going, so why not throw the ball, and that time just dumped it out of the flats, another big pop on the quarterback. It was, and I think Oak Ridge has had somebody in on him just about every time he's thrown the ball, and again, uh, third down and 10, I'm not too sure, but I would think this may be four down territory from uh, inside Oak Ridge's 37-yard line. Ball is, uh, as they come up to the line once again, the ball officially is at the 43-yard line. And they have to get to the 32 for a first. They'll come from the shotgun. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Quarterback to pass, pressured, in trouble, about to be sacked, and boom! He's blasted and sacked behind the line of scrimmage. Alex Ingham and Zach Hughes back to the 45-yard line. It'll be fourth down and 12 yards to go. You, you know, if I'm Riverdale, I never have this guy in the shotgun and have a straight drop back pass. Right now, Oak Ridge's defensive line is so much quicker than this really, they are, they're big, big guys, but they, they, are, they have no technique. They are just standing straight up, and Oak Ridge's defense Defensive line is just punishing their offensive line. Fourth down and 12. Would this be a good time to fake one? As the Wildcats are in punt position, here's the kick. Almost another block. Brady's going to field it and run with it. Brady Hill at the 20 yard line, close to it, around the 18. A flag goes in. I think a late hit's going to go in on the Riverdale Warriors. I think somebody popped in on the play late. And maybe a block in the back for Oak Ridge. I saw a guy go flying, and I think Oak Ridge may have hit somebody in the back, David. I will have to see what the call is. Official comes over to the Riverdale sideline. 14 7 Oak Ridge on top. It is a block in the back. Good call, Scott. And once again, the Wildcat offense will be backed up. 4.27 to play in the third quarter. The Wildcats' defense has been outstanding here. With the exception of one long play, the Wildcat offense has just been fantastic. It, it has. It, 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 I mean, played extremely well. The, the, right now, they're, they're also, you know, they're winning the kicking game. And, uh, you know, now it, the, the whole first half was field position. Now Oak Ridge has got the ball in not very good field position. So you, if nothing else, you'd like to see them flip the field and put 
Man, I'd love to see a, f a fresh Rocky Flood get some yardage here. He has been very inactive in the ball game. First down, 10. Bradley Zelliger has played a great ball game. Ball's at the 10-yard line. Wildcats, first and 10. He's going to throw it. Pass is caught. It's going to be for a good gain, about an eight or nine-yard gain up the right sideline by Vez Smith. Vez had a good game last week, if you remember. Had a nice long reception. Good play for the senior there. It's a gain of eight. Second down and two yards to go. We're ticking it on down here. 4.08 to play in the third quarter. 14 to 7. Oak Ridge on top. The Wildcats trying to get to the state semifinals, and that puts you one win away from the state championship ball game. Who would have ever thought the Wildcats would be in this position way back Hardin Valley? Back you know, I was thinking the same thing. You know, Hardin Valley was certainly the low point of the season, and now Oak Ridge, you know, plays plays well up above, right now, leading this Riverdale team. Rashad Gray makes the catch and goes down. Rashad caught the ball and immediately hit the ground. He had plenty of room to run, but Rashad, for whatever reason, decided to go down. The, well, the ball, the ball it was, was low. Little, it was low, but maybe you, you know, you try to scoop that one up and, and try to fight for the first down um, I'm again. Not so. Yeah, I, I agree. Hopefully, you could, you know, you really like to have that one to do over. I think he thought maybe that cornerback was up in front of his face a little bit closer than what well, he's he really a sophomore, was. But I think that's a sophomore mistake because that should have been enough for a first down. Now it's third down and one. The Wildcats are going to have to fight for it here as Zelliger comes from the shotgun once again. Third down and a yard to go. Will run the ball himself and move the ball forward and I don't think he has it. Although his second effort puts him up at the 19 yard line and that's as far as he needed to go depending on where the exact spot of the ball was. The officials have a nice mark, but it's at the 18. I think he's going to be a yard short. 2.45 to play third quarter. I'm telling you, that pass play, that should have been a first down. Yeah, it, it, sh it really should have been, and it looks like it's definitely going to be short here, David. So I'm thinking, well, you know what, they're going to call, they're going to call the uh, – It's short they're going to by call a yard change, and a half. I think it is. I think, you know, the coaches can call in for a measurement and uh, – Again, uh, you know, boy, it, it, from what I see here, you got Jose Valdon on the left side, and he's got another great big huge guy on him <laughs> who is inact I mean, just inactive, stands straight up. I think if you run left, you can get all the yards that you want to for the rest of this ball game until they do something to counteract it. Unfortunately, field position has been a key here, and the Oak Ridge defense is going to have to get back and do it. Once again, the Wildcats will be forced to punt. It's third down and a yard to go. Drew Stokes has been active as of late. Field position has been the key, and Riverdale has had it here in the second half, with, but the Wildcats are maintaining a 14-7 lead, 2.37 to play. Just kind of hate as well as the Wildcats have been playing. And that's the difference with field position. I mean, uh, you just got to play with where you have it. And you got to be careful. Here's the snap. The punt is away. High, long, spiraling kick. He makes the catch. He made a fair catch. And then is tackled immediately he at had the 45 yard signal. line. And uh, Aaron Flowers is down there along with uh, Alex Ingham. It'll be first down, 10 yards to go for the Riverdale. Did he? he? He did, David. He had his right hand, and it went up up and back one time. And then he catches the ball and then runs with it. David, that's a, a big, what delay a game, I think, penalty is what that was. So. It is, but no flag is down. Here comes Riverdale, the ball at their own 45-yard line. Uh, Rice Buick GM 8330 Kingston Pike is one of our um, sponsors tonight as the Riverdale Warriors trail 14 to 7 late in the third quarter. Have the ball first and 10 at their own 45 yard line. Pitch will go to the tailback deep in the backfield and he moves the ball for a gain of about seven. Cross midfield up to around the 47 before Jared O'Farrell makes the stop for the Wildcats. 210 to play. Field position has been all Riverdale. Here in the second half, with the exception of the opening drive, which was Bradley Zelliger just walking the ball down the field and scoring that go-ahead touchdown. But Riverdale, and you can't keep your defense out on the field forever. Exactly. They're playing very well. But, again, you know, this you know one little mistake, they're in the end zone. Second down, three yards to go. Quarterback back to pass. In trouble. Floats it. High floating pass is caught. Wide open. That time he went out of bounds. He goes out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Nice. It was a high floating pass, and I'm not sure who was out there guarding, but it is first and 10 for Riverdale. The ball is at the Oak Ridge 31 yard line, and that wakes up the Riverdale crowd. Yeah, it was a nice pass, you know, and at that time, uh, just a flag pattern and nobody around the receiver anywhere. Nice throw, nice catch by Riverdale. Ball is at the 31 yard line. Here come the Warriors to the line. We're Ticking down to a minute 40 to play. Man comes in motion to the left side. Quarterback rolling the pass. Dumps it in the flats. Overthrown incomplete. 
Wildcats got to be careful. The pass was intended out there to Mariko Odom. Second and 10, stops the clock. 14-7, Oak Ridge on top. The Wildcats fell behind. Uh, seven to nothing to the Warriors. Tied the ball game, seven seven. And then if the only score so far here in the second half has been Oak Ridge, and they lead it 14 to seven. Ball's at the Oak Ridge 31. Second down, 10 yards to go. Single receiver splits out to the far left. Double wing once again. They run the wing T formation. Second down, 10 yards to go. Man comes in motion. That's Odom. Quarterback and flags are down. We'll have to check this. I think we're going to have a legal procedure against the Warriors because the whistle blew well before the play even started. Illegal procedure, Riverdale. That's a five-yard step off against them. It'll bring up second down, 15 yards to go. Oak Ridge basketball tomorrow, beginning at 6 o'clock. The Lady Wildcats take on the Cock County Lady Fighting Cocks up in Newport, Tennessee. We'll have the broadcast beginning right around 6 o'clock. The boys' game will be at 7.30. And you can hear it on 92.7 FM and 107.3 and Faith 12.40 AM and PrepRadio.com and Oak Ridge Girls Television Channel 15. Second down, 15 yards to go. Minute 35 to play third quarter, 14 to 7 Oak Ridge. Riverdale quarterback rolling to his left, dumps it to a wide open man in the flat, and he moves the ball before he's tackled by Elliot Norman after a gain of about five to about the round back to the original line of scrimmage at the 30. It'll bring up third down and 10 facing Riverdale, and I, I'm sure it's four down territory right now for them. Some closer to nine yards to go, third down and nine. A minute 10 to play, third quarter, 14 to seven Oak Ridge. Here come the Warriors. The ball is at the Wildcat 29. Riverdale moving left to right, wearing all garnet jerseys, garnet pants, gold helmets. The Wildcats cardinal pants, white jerseys. Quarterback to pass. Across the way, pass is caught, oh, touchdown. No, it's a touchdown saving tackle by Chris Golston at the 10 yard line. That time, nice play by the quarterback and Wildcats got some pressure, but uh, he delivered a nice pass. It's first down, 10 yards to go. Ball's at the 12 yard line. Riverdale knocking on the door, taking advantage of their field position this time. 44 seconds to play. The Wildcat defense has been stingy to this point. Let's see what they can do. They've held out the run pretty well. As Riverdale brings them up once again, their quarterback is, is number 13, Dylan Woodruff. And he, he is going to be blasted as he gives it off to Odom. And then Jeff Mason and company blast him well behind the line of scrimmage all the way back to the 20. I took my eye off the play for a second. Scott didn't see it, but it's a big loss on the play. Well, they ran the toss sweep to the right side and a big loss. I know Alex Ingham had beaten his man to the corner and uh, made a nice uh, stop for a, a really a long, it looks like a, a loss of about six yards on the play. And I believe that'll be the final play of the third quarter down to five seconds. And the quarter is going to expire right now. One more quarter of high school football for one of these two teams. The quarters. As as the There's quarter no. has come to a close on the clock, and now they indeed find I thought they were going to start the uh, play. One of these two teams will be moving on to the final four in the state. The other will end their season. 14-7 to 7 Oak Ridge. We'll be back with the fourth quarter in 60 seconds. Welcome back to Murfreesboro Riverdale High School. Oak Ridge on top, 14 to seven. Fourth quarter about set. The Warriors have the ball after that big loss at the Oak Ridge 18 yard line. It's second down and 16 yards to go. Wildcat defense has been tough all night. They'll come up with a really closed in formation. Quarterback is under center. 
will roll to his right and run at the ball himself and up the field for a hey, fumble. It's a football, and it's in the air, and who's got it? Oak Ridge Wildcats. has recovered it. Oak Ridge has recovered the fumble. Riverdale has turned the ball over, and the Wildcats will take over inside the five-yard line. The ball just popped out of there. You know, he, he was going into the end zone, David, and as he did, one of the players for Oak Ridge hit the ball, and I believe Alex Ingram or somebody recovered it into the end zone. Oak Ridge will take over on the 20-yard line. What a change. Uh, what a turn of events here on one play. But look how they're walking up the field here. Was there a penalty after it? Because it went into the end zone, so it's a yeah, touchback. It's a touchback. It touchback. Gets but here's what I'm looking at. The same 11, nobody came off the field. Not one player, maybe the quarterback came. They're all 11 that are playing on offense or playing on defense, and these guys are gassed. They've got 100 players here, here too. That's really hard to understand. First and 10, Oak Ridge. At the 20-yard line, Zulliger back to pass. Dumps it, pass is caught for a gain of about three. Tackle is made by Marcellus Odom. And Brady Hulls, the, rec the receiving end of the pass. The Wildcats on top, 14 to 7. He stayed in bounds. An eternity left on the clock. 11:35 <laughs> to play in the ball game. Oak Ridge has it. Second down, and about seven yards to go. You talk about a dead crowd here at Murfreesboro Riverdale. They uh, they are really, really dead. Right, stunned is the word. As the Wildcats have the ball, the 23-yard line, moving left to right here. Rashad Gray to the left side, Ethan Wheeler, two receivers to the right. Zelliger at quarterback, second down and seven yards to go. Bradley back to pass, might run it. Now throws it, pass is incomplete and almost intercepted. Bad decision, that's, that's a, not a good decision that time by Bradley. And he threw it to Vez Smith. It's incomplete. Yeah, and also, you know, also stops the clock. And not, not a good pass at all. You know, Bradley was was looking for somebody to come open. Probably, you know, in hindsight, probably should have, have just went ahead and ran that and see how far how far he could have gotten. But not a good pass. Oak Ridge lucky to dodge a bullet there. It's now third down and seven. Big, big play. Brady Hull, Vez Smith split out to the left. Rashad Gray, Ethan Wheeler to the right. One lone running back for the Wildcats. Bradley rolls to pass, looks, fires a pass, complete. Get the first down, and he's oh. tripped up. Vez Smith made the catch and looked around to see where somebody was, and that extra amount of time cost him, and the Wildcats will be forced to punt yet again. You, boy, tough right there. He's got, uh, you know, as soon as he catches the ball, you hope he just shoots up the field, and maybe his momentum takes him to the first down. That time, he actually looks to make a big play and gets tripped up going in. Oak Ridge will be forced to punt. Quick series for the Wildcats. Man, if they faked it right here, they could get it because I think they're not even ready, but they're going to punt. Here's the kick. It's away. Low, short kick. Going to bounce and kick a nice Oak Ridge bounce, roll inside the 30-yard line down to the 29. And Riverdale's got the full length of the field, well, 70 yards to drive here. The Wildcat offense hasn't been, after that first drive, haven't been able to get it done. The Wildcats defense, though, has been stellar, and credit, they got a turnover away, which uh, helped them inside the 10-yard line, but the defense has been out on the field a long time. They've been out the whole second half, and, you know, so far, David, they were out just about that whole third quarter, but uh, they've played well. You know, this team, it's a nice night to play. The conditioning, if you're not going both ways, shouldn't be that big of a factor. 14-7, Oak Ridge in the lead, 10-20 to play in the ball game. Riverdale offense on the field once again. Ball's at the 29-yard line. And once again, the quarterback to pass, rolling, looks, might run it, throws a pass across the way, almost intercepted by Oak Ridge's Ryan Hall and Chris Golston. The Wildcats got a lot of pressure. And once again, the TargetTrader.com is a huge sponsor of Oak Ridge High School Wildcat football here on FM 92.7 and 107.3 FM. You know, they came on a little bit later on with our broadcast, and we definitely appreciate them. The TargetTrader.com, one of our huge sponsors here on Wildcat football. Second down, 10 yards to go. For Riverdale, the ball at their own 29-yard line, 10-13 to play in the game, 14-7, Oak Ridge in the lead. Riverdale has one receiver to the right, double wing once again, one lone running back. Quarterback will run it himself and is tackled and dropped at the 30-yard line. Jeff Card. The Wildcats, Jeff Card and Elliot Norman. And Elliot Norman has 113 tackles this year. For a sophomore. Hey, it's incredible. He has had a phenomenal year. You know, he's come in on offense and made some big plays as well. It'll be third down, nine yards to go, and I'm looking at the Riverdale coaching staff. I'm looking at the 100 Riverdale players here, and they're, they're in total just shocked. Their high-powered offense just hasn't been able to move the ball much at all against the Wildcats. Big play here, third down and nine yards to go. Shotgun once again. 
for their quarterback. He's back to pass, dumps it out of the flats, pass is oh. caught up the field for good yardage, and then he fumbles the football, and the oh, ball's great. on the ground, and Oak Ridge, I think, no. has it. Oak Ridge is recovered at the 50-yard line. Another big pop by the Wildcats, and once again, the turnovers and the big turnovers, and I think they're going to give Oak Ridge the ball at the midfield. Ryan Hall recovers the Wildcats, have been physical all year in about every ball game, and they have another turnover. Here comes the Oak Ridge offense at the 50-yard line. You know, what a play. Again, I'm not sure who caused the fumble, but you, you, there was no doubt who got it because it happened right in front of the Oak Ridge bench, and the Oak Ridge bench just exploded. We are down to 9.25 to play. The Wildcat offense is right at midfield. First down, 10 yards to go, their best field position of the second half. They lead it 14-7 over Riverdale. Quarterback is Bradley Zilliger from the shotgun once again. In motion comes Elliot Norman. Here comes Rocky running the ball. Rocky is blasted. Rocky just can't get on track. Wildcats, I know want a work clock. I know want a work clock, but uh, Wildcats, would. I'd love to get another score here. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, again, another score here, you feel a lot better about your chances, but now, you know, I would not I would think that Oak Ridge is going to put the ball in Bradley Zilliger's hands, fake that same play, and let Bradley try to get outside. Loss of two on the play, second down, 12 yards to go. The, the cheerleaders for Riverdale trying to get their uh, – crowd revved up here. They've got an excellent student section and let's comment on the Oak Ridge section across the way. It's totally full of Wildcat fans. Second down 11 yards to go. The ball is at the 48 yard line of Oak Ridge. In motion comes Ryan Hall. Zilliger at quarterback. Drops back to pass. Fires one and throws it away because he was about to be popped. And it's incomplete. That time somebody missed a block. It's incomplete. Third down and 10. The Riverdale Fans want a grounding call, I believe. It's not grounding if he's outside the tackle box, and it looked like to me he was. So I don't know. It's going to be close to actually the officials down there, or uh, they're, they're talking about it, Dave, but there was no flag called. There was no flag on the field. So how can you all of a sudden say that's grounding? Oh, there's the flag. They throw the flag late. You got a whole crew out here that's influenced by the coaching staff, and at that time Bradley just threw it away to uh, get rid of it. And it is intentional grounding against the Wildcats. So that's uh, it's going to cost them big time. You know, the Wildcats cannot play in a game where they don't have suspense at the end of the ball game. It'd be so nice to march down the field, score a touchdown, get up by two, as opposed to it's going to come down to the final possession, the way it has, yeah, the, the way the playoffs have gone for us that, so far. You're exactly right. Now, you know, you still, I know it was the right thing to do at the time, but how big would that field goal have been earlier in that ball game? And again, I said, you got to, you know, you got to score touchdowns. Had no idea that uh, Oak Ridge's defense would play as well as it has. Balls walked back to the 37 yard line where it is third down in an eternity for the Wildcats. 8.34 Third. to play as the ball is at the 38-yard line. The Wildcats have two receivers to the right, two to the left. Shotgun formation for Bradley Zelliger, 14-7. Oak Ridge on top. We're in the fourth quarter. Zelliger at quarterback. The center is Kevin Crane. Wants to throw it. Might run it. Now throws it deep to a wide open man. He's across the 45. He's got a first, first down. down. Wow. First down inside Riverdale territory at the 39 yard line. Wide open. Bradley had time, delivered the pass. First and 10 Oak Ridge. You know, Riverdale just backed everything up. You know, they backed everything up 40 yards. People are leaving. And then Oak Ridge just uh, saw the guy open about 15 yards deep, and he ends up uh, making the first down. Big first down by the Wildcats. Scott, look, Riverdale fans are getting up and leaving. There is exactly 8.20 to play in the ballgame. It's first and 10 Oak Ridge. The ball's at the 39-yard line. Oak Ridge has it, and new life here. Zelliger at quarterback, 14-7 Oak Ridge in the lead. Zelliger will run it. Zelliger to the outside at the 35, to the 30. Bradley Zelliger picks up another. Oak Ridge first down, moves the ball to the Riverdale 25-yard line. Absolutely, great play there. That's the play I'd like to see them, where you fake it, get that defensive end, go around them, and Bradley picked up about 12 yards for another first down. The Wildcats are trying to beat Riverdale for the second consecutive time. The last time was in the state semifinals in 2005 when they did it at Blankenship Field, 17 to nothing. First and 10 Oak Ridge at the Riverdale 25-yard line, 7.49 to play in the game. 14 to 7 Oak Ridge in the lead. 
Bradley under center, Rocky Flood, Rocky Flood picks up about seven yards as he's inside the 20, down to around the 17 yard line. And you can kind of sense the Riverdale Warriors are beginning to, as you said earlier, wear out. And I believe they think the breaks have not gone their way and things are definitely have gone the way of the Wildcats. And, and again, you know, these guys, I mean, they're big and they have worn out. And I heard one, I think it was, um, Jeff Mason talk on one of the pregame shows. We're going to hang tough in the first half, and then we're going to explode in the second half after they're tired. Second down, two yards to go, two receivers to the right. The Wildcats in the lead, 14 to 7. Handoff goes Rocky Flood, moves the ball, guarding the ball, push back. The Wildcats would love to be practicing on Thanksgiving Day at the practice field at Ben Martin Track and playing the Friday after Thanksgiving. And right now, they are six minutes and 55 seconds away from being in the final four in the state of Tennessee. This is a team that lost to, to Hardin Hard Valley. Valley and looked horrible doing it. And right now, the Wildcats, maybe because of the teams they've played this year, have battle tested them. And I tell you, the Wildcats are road warriors. The Wildcats are six and one on the road this year, two and three at Blankenship Field. I think they prefer to be on the road. Third down, less than a yard to go. The ball is at the Riverdale 15-yard line. Got to hold on to the ball here. Zelliger under center. And let's see if he sneaks the ball forward. Long count, and the Wildcats will call a timeout. Six minutes, 17 seconds to play in the ball game. The Wildcats trying to make it with a date with the Maribel Rebels the second time this year. Wildcats played them at Blankenship Field earlier on in the year and seven turnovers, I believe. Six or seven turnovers doomed the Wildcats on that particular night. And if the Wildcats could hold on here and play the kind of ball they're playing, I'm telling you, Oak Ridge is playing at their best football right when they need to be playing it, right here. At Ab play absolutely. And, and who would have ever thought, though, that if, let's say, we still got a long time to go in this ball game, but it, should they win, that you travel all the way to Maryville for a semifinal game. I know, that's unbelievable. The Wildcats have gone to Middle Tennessee and taken care of business. Well, Chad, uh, Bradley's not really Middle Tennessee, but considered Middle Tennessee. See what Oak Ridge can do. Aaron Flowers, Bryce Wesh, Jose Valadon, Chris Ramsey, along with Kevin Crane, as the Wildcats will get under center this time. They need about a half a yard for a first. Bradley sneaks the ball. He's got a first down. Inside the 15-yard line, stunned, stunned silence here at Murfreesboro Riverdale High School. And I'm going to open this window. <laughs> as the Wildcats have the lead 14 to 7, 6 12 to play. The Oak Ridge crowd across the way going nuts as they signal first down. So the Wildcats and more fans beginning to step up and head on out as the Wildcats have the lead here by a 14 to 7 score. The ball's at the 15 yard line. Maybe I should shut it here. Maybe that's kind of tacky. But as the Wildcats come to the line once again, ball's at the 15 yard line. I formation, Elliot Norman, along with Rocky Flood in the backfield, Zelliger at quarterback at the 15. Bradley running might be a busted play. Bradley just gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Riverdale has, let's see, all three of their timeouts. The Wildcats have it. Second down and nine yards to go. The ball is at the 14-yard line of Riverdale. Well, five, field goal range as well. Field goal, I'll take a field goal here if he five, can't get a touchdown. 5.35 to play in the ball game. The Wildcats trying to hold on and get a chance to play in the final four and play the day after Thanksgiving, and what a feat that would be for this young Oak Ridge team. Here they come to the line, Rashad Gray to the left, Des Smith as a receiver to the right along with Ethan Wheeler. Backfield split, second down, nine yards to go. Bradley's gonna run it behind his line, and still on his way, but doesn't get a whole lot. It's gonna be third down and about seven yards to go. Five minutes to play, there's still such an eternity left. You don't wanna turn it over, but you don't, you don't wanna come away and give them the ball back without any points here. But you're right, they're in Brett Beeler's field goal range. Ball is at the 13 yard line, third down, eight yards to go. Down to 4.45 to play in the ball game. 14 to seven, Oak Ridge on top of the Murfreesboro Riverdale Warriors. Wildcats trying to beat them for the second time only in school history. Two receivers right, two to the left. Third down, eight yards to go. Zelliger, back to pass. Wide open man, pass is caught. He's got a touchdown for the Wildcats. Oak Ridge wow. scores. Yeah. Oak Ridge <laughs> scores. Ryan Hall scores.
Warriors and the Wildcats up their lead to 20 to 7 over the Murfreesboro Riverdale Warriors. And Oak Ridge will go for the extra point. Well, I'm kind of even surprised. That I think like everybody else, I'm surprised that they even threw the ball. You know they're in field goal range, and they throw the ball Ryan Hall wide open and then makes a nice run straight to the middle of the field. Big play, Oak Ridge, as Oak Ridge goes up. 13 with the extra point forthcoming. Here's the kick. It's on its way. It's up and it is good. The Wildcats have a two touchdown lead with 421 to play in the ball game. On Coach T, they called Oak Ridge a cupcake team. With a cupcake schedule, haven't played anybody. The Wildcats have come to Murfreesboro Riverdale and handed it to them on their home field. You know, you've got to give every one of these fans, every one of these cheerleaders, the coaching staff, and especially these kids, David, and, and the turnaround that they have had since whatever week seven whatever the the hard and valid, I mean the lowest one of the to me one of the worst defeats in Oak Ridge history and then all of a sudden they've come back and are four minutes from going to the semifinals of the state the championship. The final four in the state, one win. Of course, they have to play Maryville. You know, it's a daunting. But, you know, these guys don't know. They, they think they can beat anybody right now. They're, they do. They really do. And, and, again, now, this game is not over. This These guys can score in a hurry. But, uh, you know, you look at the Riverdale fans, David, there's a whole lot of them gone home to watch Matlock. <laughs> that was murder, she wrote, as the Wildcats prepare to kick off. Got to keep from having a big return here because they've got the guys to do it. Wildcats on top, 21-7, to 7, 421 to play. Here's the kick. Beeler, it's returnable. It's a very short kick. Field it at the 10, 15, 20. Here comes a beeline to the return. And boom! He's blasted at the 20-yard line. The Wildcats drop him with... Uh, Let's see, Golston, Card, and a host of Wildcats. Oak Ridge defense has been outstanding all night. And the Wildcats will take over first and 10 at the 23-yard line. The Riverdale Warriors will take over first and 10 at their own 22. <sighs> take a breath, David. Four minutes, 14 seconds to play. For those of us who lived through the early years of this series, playing these Riverdale teams, this is uh, outstanding. This is so fun as the Riverdale Warriors once again from the shotgun, first and 10. Here's a snap. The quarterback is hit, pitches the ball up the field. Boom! Nice hit. Nice. Wildcats Ryan Hall has been all over I the field tonight. Say, Ryan Hall has played a, a nice defensive game and a very nice offensive game. And that time he comes up from his quarterback play, position, they run the option. Looks like they may have a big gainer. Ryan Hall comes up, makes a big stick for a gain of five. Three minutes, 59 seconds to play. Second down, five yards to go. Clock is moving. 21 7. Oak Ridge on top as we broadcast here at Riverdale. Quarterback to pass, in a little trouble, in a trouble, he's a lot of trouble Dang. because he's sucked behind the line of scrimmage. The sophomore goes down, their vaulted offense hasn't been able to move the ball at all tonight against the Wildcats. I know Bingham's in there, it looks like Aaron Flowers was in there, maybe Jeff Card was in there well, maybe even O'Farrell, hard to see, but uh, again, what a big play, third down and 12, four down territory, David, this could be the ball game in the next two plays. Third down, 12, 319 to play in somebody's season, the Wildcats Wildcats have gone on the road three straight weeks. The Wildcats are 2-0, and trying to knock off Riverdale. Quarterback to pass. Pressured. In a lot of trouble. Fires a pass. Caught. Nice pay. Odom up the field for a first down and more and runs out of bounds at the 40-yard line. So the Warriors, a nice catch by Odom and a nice run. And once again, I've just been told to tell you that Matlock has been canceled since the 80s. <laughs> sorry. I'm, I'm sorry there, Scott. But uh, it's a first down play for Riverdale, the ball at the 40-yard line. At least we have people listening to us. <laughs> We're down to three minutes to play here. Once again, shotgun formation. Quarterback to pass. A lot of hole. pressure. Look at a hole out right of the there. backfield. Pass is caught up the field and runs out of bounds at the 50. Wow. And that's Jeffrey a, Mason was tackled on the play. Big left guard number 63 just bear hugged him, David. Horrible. Wildcats were rushing three right there. As here comes uh, Sam Bingham in the ball game. Zach Hughes will check out. 2:57 to play. 21 to seven. Oak Ridge in the lead, but Riverdale on the move. They have the ball at their own 49-yard line. Second down, two yards to go. They'll come from the shotgun. Dylan Wood Woodruff, their quarterback. Here's the snap. Cranks it up to pass. Pass is almost intercepted by Tyrus Henderson. Second down and third down now. Two yards to go. Clock is stopped. 2.52 to play in the ball game. The Wildcats, I'm going to say it, have dominated this ball game from start to finish. I guarantee they have. I mean, from, you know, you take away, again, that one long touchdown pass. That's the, you know, has been all their offense where they got their score. But Oak Ridge has been dominant on both sides of the ball. Ball's at the 49-yard line, but 
be nice to get the ball back away from him here so we don't have to have one of those uh, to the wire finishes that we've had the last two weeks. Shotgun formation once again. Quarterback hands it to the back, and he knows the quarterback running it, and he's got good running room up the field, and he's into the secondary, oh. and he's going to take it all the way for a touchdown. So oh, just like that. Just like that, David, just like that. And again, now, now you got a two minutes, 41 seconds. you got a potential seven-point game. And again, Oak Ridge, uh, you know, they may have a the, – the, it may be too early to do the onside kick, but the way that Oak Ridge has moved the ball, you probably expect to see it. 21-14, 21-13 the score, 20, oh, exactly 2.41 to play in Riverdale. Got some interacting yeah. fans here with me here. Enjoying it here as the kicker will kick, the low snap, the kick is on its way, it's up and it is good. 21-14 our score, 2.41 to play in the ball game. And you knew it was gonna come down to a very good game, David, you got 21-14 Oak Ridge up, two minutes, 41 seconds to go in this ball game. Loser goes home, and the winner goes on to play Maryville. 241 uh, onside kick, yes or no? Yes, I think they do it because the way the Wildcats have been able to move the ball, and, of course, it was it last week, I think Ryan Hall recovered an onside kick. You know, why can't the Wildcats quit being these cardiac kids? I think they just deliberately want the fans and us to wait to the last play of the ball game. And it's been like that, you know, all year, especially in these, you know, the playoffs. Of course, it goes down to the wire last week. And again, two minutes, 41 seconds left to go. You know, it, most exciting play in football is the onside kick, and we're going to see one here in a second. TheTargetTrader.com is a great sponsor of Wildcat football. Come see the 92.7 as they broadcast live in West Town Mall beginning next week. And we appreciate the TargetTrader.com as our sponsors as we get ready for the kickoff. Down to 2.41 to play. Riverdale still has all, all three, three of their, their timeouts. timeouts. Yep, I looked at that myself. As the Wildcats have the lead, but uh, things are getting a little dicey as they have been in the last two playoff ball games. As the Riverdale Warriors, the Wildcats have the good hands team. Joe Cobb, Brady Hull, Ryan Hall, Tyrus Henderson, Elliot Norman on the front line. They've got Cam Gregg on the back line. Rashad Gray, Ethan Wheeler, Vez Smith, and Jeff Mason. The Warriors will be kicking off here in a 21-14 ball game. Oak Ridge on top. Here comes the kicker. He's got it down on the tee. Here's the onside kick, and Tyrus makes the catch, and he just got popped. But that's okay. Yeah, but Oak Ridge has the ball. But Oak Ridge has the ball. That's what and the lead. Great job of Tyrus and Henderson Riverdale. to stick it in there, David. Riverdale. We got unruly fans. Turn around. 21-14 the score. Turn around and watch the game. Oak Ridge has come to Riverdale, and they lead 21-14. to 240 to play in the ball game. The Wildcats have the ball at the 50-yard line. Big stick. It was a great stick by them. But, again, more importantly, Oak Ridge gets the ball, and and uh, with 2.40 left to go in this ball game, David, a couple first down, you know that Riverdale's going to use the timeouts as well. Here comes the Wildcats. A turnover would be killer right now. The Wildcats have it at midfield. First down, 10 yards to go. The ball is at the 50-yard line. Bradley Zulliger at quarterback from the shotgun will run the ball himself, breaks a tackle, but then gets plastered right at the 49-yard line. That's right. But, you know, what you cannot do now, David, is turn the ball over. Cannot turn it over. And again, I can't remember, I can't tell. Oh, Riverdale. Yeah, Riverdale did take a timeout, so that's their first. They have two more. And uh, let's, we'll, keep her, let's keep we'll it right here. St we'll stay here. And again, what an exciting game. And, uh, you know, shame on the fans that left. You know, yeah, there were several of the that. fans that left. And, uh, you know, shame on those guys. Wildcats in the lead 21 to 14. There is exactly 2.31 to play in the ballgame. Riverdale has two timeouts remaining. The Wildcats and Riverdale Warriors. The winner goes to the final four in the state to take on Maryville. Does Oak Ridge dare to put the ball in the air here? David, I know they've been, had a lot of success when Bradley rolled out to the left and had that guy kind of just do it a little out. And, you know, it's what the, the, made the, the big play with Ryan Hall. Wouldn't be surprised if you see that play. I know it's, you know, it takes a little bit of guts to call that because you don't want to stop the clock yourself. Second down, 10 yards to go. The ball is at the 49-yard line of Oak Ridge. Zelliger is the quarterback. Rocky Flood, the lone running back. Two receivers to the left. The pitch will go to Rocky. He's a block from Balladon and goes down right at the line of scrimmage. They're doing a great job. And let's see if Riverdale uses one of their timeouts. They will. It's now going to be third down and 10 yards to go. Wildcats have not moved the ball one inch 
And it's third and ten. And there's still a lot of time. You know, David, they're doing a good job with their timeouts. And again, you know, big play in this ball game. Third and ten. Got to get up first down here, or you punt the ball over. And if you do do that, you know, they're going to have two minutes, ten, twelve seconds left to go. So. Uh, Big first down here that is, is muchly needed. What an exciting ball game here in the playoffs here at Riverdale High School. The Wildcats currently in the lead 21-14, but it's just the way it's been in these playoffs. The Cookville ball game, the Bradley ball game, it comes down to the final play of the game. The Wildcats, if they can pick up a first down right here, they can probably run the game out because there's only one timeout remaining for Riverdale, but it's third and 10. Ball to 50 from the I-formation. Zelliger will pitch back to Rocky. And Ryan, he's going to throw it. Tavez Smith passes. That's interference. The There's the flag. Yes, yes. There's the flag. Yeah. Oh. Boom. The flag. Boom. <laughs> it's going to be pass interference. Ball game. Pass interference against the Riverdale Warriors, and that'll give Oak Ridge the first down. 2.15 to play as the penalty yardage will be stepped off against Riverdale, and their dreams of playing Maryville in the state championship, or at least in the semifinals, I think, are about to go by the board as the Wildcats will beat Riverdale for the second consecutive time if they can hold on for the final 2:15. Wow, what a game. And, of course, that's pass interference any day in the world. You know, uh, Vez is trying to come back for the ball, and as the ball is in the air, he gets mugged by the uh, quarterback back here, and uh, Oak Ridge is up to the line of scrimmage quickly, first down to 10. Ball's at the 35-yard line. Riverdale only has one timeout remaining, 2:15 to play. Hand off to the running back for Oak Ridge, who moves the ball forward for a gain of about two. And the clock is now no longer on the side of the Warriors. They have used their final timeout of the ball game. The Wildcats on top, 21-14. This is kind of fun interacting with this gentleman in front it, of us here. It's amazing that he's. I mean, what's he expect us to say? We, you know, we're for Oak, we're for Oak Ridge. I'll tell anybody that. So I don't I don't know what he's thinking. Ball is at the 33-yard line, second down and seven. No more timeouts for Riverdale. 2.09 to play. Can't turn the ball over there, Scott. The Wildcats nope. have just got to pound it. Try to get a first. One first down will do it, and the Wildcats can take a knee. It, it, they can. Two minutes, nine seconds left. Now, now, even if they don't get a first down, you know, they're going to milk the clock. And, David, you're probably going to be inside of 45 seconds or so, even if they don't get a first down is the way I calculate it. Hey, Scott, let's get a first down here. Let's, let's not worry I agree. about it. Let's just get one and, and, and take it to the house. We're on prepradio.com. We're also on 92.7 FM, 107.3 FM. 12:40 Faith AM PrepRadio.com. The Wildcats on top, 21 to 14 over Murfreesboro Riverdale. As the Wildcats come to the line, second down, seven yards to go. The quarterback is Bradley Zulliger. 2:09 to play in the ball game. They cannot stop the clock again. Handoff goes to Rocky Flood into the end zone. Maybe Rocky Flood to the outside. 15, 10, touchdown! Touchdown! Boom! Wildcats score! Riverdale is going home as the Wildcats up their lead with a touchdown. 27 to 14, the score. The Wildcats. Here, as the Wildcats currently have the lead 27 to 14. And here's the kick. The extra point is on its way. It's up, and it is good. 28 to 14, the score. I think we're going to need a. Um, a armed escort out of the press box here, I think, as the Wildcats lead it 28 to 14. Two minutes to play in Riverdale season as Oak Ridge has the lead by a score of 28 to 14. As the Wildcats lead it 28 to 14. You don't shut, you don't shut and once again, on let's see. Once again, on the Wildcats will be kicking off. I apologize. We're Whatever. having some incidents up here. We're, uh, the, the way the press box is set up, the Riverdale fans can look inside the press area. Mike, you want to block the door here? There's a really big guy about to come in the door here as the Wildcats lead it 28 to 14. The Wildcats will be headed to the final four in the state of Tennessee. Uh, they'll take on Maryville. Wildcats are up two touchdowns with two minutes to go. It's still possible. It is possible. But uh, should we open our window back? As here's the kick fielded by the Riverdale Warriors. Ben's afraid. Here's the run, return man, and he's going to be tackled hard at the 25 yard line. 28 to 14, the Wildcats in the lead. Scott? A lot of things happening wow. up here in the well, booth. I don't, you know, again, I mean, I stick my head out the window to say something to an unruly fan, and another guy comes out 
and tries to shut the window on my head. Right? Should I open the window, Ben? I don't care. Ben, are you afraid? <laughs> ben doesn't want us to open the window as the Wildcats lead it 28 to 14. No, I don't want anyone. Oh, oh, okay, they're going to come through this door here, Ben, so you better be ready. <laughs> As the as the Warriors the Warriors will have it first and ten, balls at the 25 yard line, shotgun formation, quarterback back to pass in the flats, pass is caught at the 32 yard line. Elliot Norman defending, minute 46 to play, 28 to 14. The Wildcats have only defeated Riverdale on one occasion, 17 to nothing, back in 2005. As the Warriors have it. Running quickly, second down. They scored quickly the last time. Pass is caught. Then a nice hit by Tyrus Henderson, I believe. And it's going to be a first down up to the 43-yard line. Moving the ball, minute 29 to play. And I've never really kind of seen what I have seen here. Where are you going, Scott? I'd go that way if I were you. And uh, uh, we're going to hopefully... Scott's going to depart here. A minute 27 to play. First down, 10 yards to go. We'll have player interviews down on the field. Here's a pass, deep pass. Pass is going to be batted down. Why didn't he pick it off? He could have picked that one off. Pass is incomplete. Defending on the play was Chris Golston. I think Chris could have intercepted that one, but he batted it down. And that They live to play another down here. I think the coaching staff, you want to bat it down if it's fourth down. But that was a third down play as, well, as the, the intensity here is is sky high, David. As, as Oak Ridge leads it 28 to 14, we're down to a minute 20 to play in the ball game. The Wildcats trying to get ready to play Maryville if they can hold on. Quarterback back to pass in a lot of trouble. Hands it off to the back, up the field to the 50, moves the ball, and then is tackled at the Riverdale 37-yard line with a minute 11 to play. What scares me is how big chunks of yardage they're getting right now. Absolutely, they're you know first down, first down, first down. You know, they're going to have to slow them down a little bit, David. We're here with a minute and nine seconds left. I, I do feel good about the Wildcats' chance because we're up by 14, but I sure wish we could stop them here. Wildcats, here comes the quarterback back to pass again. There's some holding. Quarterback in a lot of trouble, nearly sacked by Sam Bingham. They complete the pass. He breaks the tackle and moves the ball up to the 20. Under a minute to play here, but they've got the ball Another inside the 25-yard line where it is now. First down, 10 yards to go. Oak Ridge on top, 28 to 14. And it'd be nice to just to stop them here. Of course, the quarterback's doing a really good job. Uh, that's Dylan Woodruff. Under center, man comes in motion. Hands it to the back, trying to get outside. Up the field, moves the ball forward, and is denied a touchdown. Oh, he does score. Touchdown, 20-yard run. Still in the ball game. Absolutely, still in the ball David. game. They're, you know, there's still 49 seconds left. Onside, onside kick, kick, they get the ball. Come, absolutely. Anything can happen. This is a tremendous football game. The Wildcats needed a stop, couldn't get it. Riverdale credit them on a great offensive execution that time to move the ball down the field. Now, extra point forthcoming. 28 to 20 the score. Big extra point here. The Wildcats could use a block as the holder. Here's a low snap. Kick is on its way. It's up, and it is good. 28 to 21, and just like that, we've got a seven-point game, an onside kick. They get it. Who knows what's going to happen? Oh, this is scary, David. Again, the, the, the cardiac kids, as you said earlier, this has been an extremely exciting game. Riverdale. There is no quit in this team, Dave. They are very talented, no doubt about it. The Wildcats are really going to have to get on this ball and try to recover it again like they did the last time. 28 to, four, to 21 now. You know, I go back to that play where Chris Golston batted the ball down. He could have easily oh, yeah. picked off that pass and, and taken it, but it's not the case. Yeah, I, I wish that had happened, but it didn't, and we just got to take the cards we're dealt, and we've got to get this ball back on it. And all, again, David, the good hands people are up front. They're expecting it. He's lining it up just like he did the last time. Wildcats got it the last time, but uh, there's just too much time left on the clock as the Wildcats, if they recover the onside kick, Oak Ridge is going to win it. But if they don't, whew, who knows? Riverdale, 28-21, trying to score two touchdowns in less than two minutes as the Riverdale Warriors prepare to kick off. 28-21, 49 seconds to go. I look for him to kick it a little harder this time, David. 
And Same person. Dyer Sanderson recovers it for the Wildcats. And the Wildcats are going to win this ball game. They just have to take a couple knees, and the Wildcats will head back to Oak Ridge victorious for the second consecutive time over the Riverdale Warriors. The Wildcats 28 to 21, 47 seconds to play. All you have to do is take a knee, go down, and the Wildcats will win. Wow, that was just an outstanding game for the Wildcats, David. What? What tenacity these guys have. They, they never give up. They hang in there the whole time. They're tenacious. I love this team. It's been so exciting all year long to watch these guys. And this man, this man was up. coming in the door here. He, he was, was coming. trying to. Yeah. The coaches shut the door in his face and wouldn't let him in. Wildcats are about to take a knee and take a victory home to Oak Ridge. Wildcats will take on the Maryville Rebels as Bradley takes a knee. Riverdale could not stop it. The Wildcats were told all week long that they couldn't play with a Middle Tennessee team, couldn't play with a Rutherford County team, but they have come and they have played well. They certainly have, David. And they, they have, have earned this victory by really executing very well tonight, especially Zulliger. He, he's just played a whale of a game, David. Be sure to join us tomorrow night as the Lady Wildcats and guys start their action as Zach, Bradley Zelliger takes a knee and the Wildcats win by a final score of 28 to 21. And it's pandemonium here at Riverdale High School as the Wildcats defeat Riverdale on their home field. The Wildcats have gone on the road for three playoff ball games. The Wildcats have come home with a victory and Riverdale is going home as the Wildcats are victorious Absolutely. by a final score of 28 to 21. Oh, yeah. All right, David, I'm going to go ahead and go first. I got Jeff Mason down here. Jeffrey, what a ball game. Of course, you, when you win, on a, a, it doesn't take them long to take the score off the field. 28 21. What a huge victory for this Wildcat team. Oh, uh, this is amazing. This is everything I dreamed of. I, I'm speechless. This is awesome. You know, you end up top four, you know, week seven or whatever it was, you lose to Hardin Valley. Yeah. Who would have ever thought you're in the top four of the state? Hey, those those are bumps in the road. We learned from them, and now now we're executing like we need to be. What a great ball game. The defense was totally dominant in this game. I know you gave up some some points here, you know, at the end of the ball game, but for three and a half quarters, this defense was, defense was incredible. Yes, sir. You know, we... We, we knew it was going to be a fight to the end. We knew they were going to throw punches. We knew we had to throw punches back. Our defense has been great all year long, and our offense is finally stepping up, and we're becoming a team. It's amazing to me. Again, a team. It's a team victory. The offense played well, special teams. To beat this Riverdale team who scored 59 last week, it's got to feel great. Oh, it feels wonderful. It great, feels wonderful. Great game, Jeffrey. I've got uh, Cam. Cam, again, uh, you know, 28-21. Uh, Who would have thought it? Man, you know, no one probably thought it other than us, and that's all that counts. You know, we had 50 people believing and a goal that we wanted to accomplish, and that was winning the game. And, you know, when you have that people, that many people believing and one goal, you know, you're able to accomplish it, and that's what we did tonight. You know, I know they didn't give you guys a whole lot of respect. No, I don't think anybody with you guys would have won this game. I think Oak Ridge, the, you, the players, the only ones who actually thought that. And you guys came out here and just executed really, really perfectly. Yeah, we did We did a nice job executing the game plan that, you know, Coach Blade and all the coaching staff had uh, made for this week. And like you said, no one really thought we were going to win this game, you know, on the forums, on the Internet and stuff. They were talking trash about how we hadn't played anybody. And, you know, we prevailed tonight, and it's, it's a good feeling. Who would have thought? I know you missed several games with the nose injury. You know, you lose to Hardin Valley, and now all of a sudden you're in the top four of the state. I know. It's, it's, it's an awesome feeling, you know. When you know, at one point, Coach Blade's been saying we were three and two, or two and three rather, and no one, no one thought we could make it this far. Everybody had counted us out, and you know, we've just gotten better as the uh, season's gone, gone forward, and you know, it's awesome. That's all I can say. And, and then you know, to top it off, you get you get a rematch with Maribel. I know, and at Blankenship Field. That's no, I think the, I think it's going to be at, at Maribel, if I'm not mistaken. Either way, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, to, again, great ball game, Cam. Again, enjoyed watching you play. Uh, next week, one more. Let me get let me get Rocky over here. Hey, Rocky, come here. Let me get. I got uh, Rocky, Rocky, Flo Rocky. Thank you, Cam. Thank. What a ball game. You know, things just went down to the wire. It seemed like they always do. But Oak Ridge comes out, prevails, and the offense really looked good. Uh, oh man, I don't, that's 
we just that's that's come from us wanting it bad enough. Coach Wade, he tell us every game. He said it's, he said before we came out of halftime, he said if you don't want it, it depends on who who wants it bad enough. And once again, we wanted it bad enough. You know the defense. I know you didn't play any defense, but the defense was dominant, especially in the first half. They they broke open that one long run. Other than that, they they did nothing. I believe they they punted more in this game than they've punted all season. And they did a key thing: turn the ball over. We got two key key turnovers in the third quarter, which helped us. We got the ball back and we scored with it. Good point. Of course, I already talked to Cam. You, you know, usually in the state semifinals, you got to go to Middle Tennessee or West Tennessee. You get to go to Maryville and you get a rematch with those guys. I know seven turnovers. I, I, it, I think it'll be a different game next week. It's getting ready to be the biggest game of my life for her next week, so I'm ready. I, I'm sure that you think that, and I'm sure that you, all your teammates think that. Rocky, great, great, great ball game tonight. Thank you. Thank you again. Oak Ridge victorious at Murfreesboro Riverdale, 28 to 21.